Okay. I'm starting a little bit early here. I won't get actually started until 10 o'clock. Can everybody hear me all right? Let me know in the comments over there if you can hear me. Can everybody hear the sound all right? Hopefully you can. Good. Okay. Looks good. Okay. And we'll just give a few minutes here. I just thought I'd go ahead and, and um, log on to this whole thing a while. And uh, we'll let it go until about 10 o'clock. Then we'll get started um, with everything. Um, so I'll be going over a bunch of different things. I know a lot of people have questions and everything else. I have questions too. <laughs> and uh, we will be going over a lot of that. Yes, Happy New Year to you as well. Um, we made it through another one. One year closer to the Lord's catching up with the body of Christ. Thankfully. <laughs> Praise the Lord for that. Every day, every day it draws closer. So that's a good thing. All right. Oliver in the room here too. He probably pop in occasionally. There he is. So he has a, a thing he's liking to do now. He has a little light pad and he's tracing things and everything else. So um, he might be working on that as we're in live stream here. So we'll see how that goes. Now, what time is it? 9.54, so we have about six minutes left here until we get started. So. Now if you want to see and saw one from the Philippines and uh, one from South Korea there. So if you feel like it, you don't have to. It's up to you, but it'd be nice where you just where you're from, what state or whatever else. No addresses or anything like that. <laughs> Don't we get in trouble on Goonie Two here? But uh, Lithuania, that's neat. But yeah, if you just want to write, you know, hi from whatever state, There's New Jersey, Iowa, Fort Worth. Yorkshire, England, Detroit, Michigan, North Carolina, Tennessee, Greek here, Texas, California, North Carolina, Indiana, Central Illinois, Arkansas, Michigan, Florida, Texas, South Carolina, England, Dayton, Ohio, Chicago, Illinois, Louisiana, Texas, Melbourne, Australia, Ohio, Manitoba, Canada, Kingston, Ontario, Alabama, Sweden, Texas, Massachusetts, Canada, Bronx, Bellevue, Michigan, Upper Peninsula, Michigan, Ventura, California, Brooklyn, New York, Idaho, Connecticut, Tennessee, Great Britain, uh, Lake Jackson, Texas, South Korea, Florida, South Dakota. Pretty good coverage there. That's pretty neat. Over in England and Texas. amazing you know the internet certainly has a lot of issues but there's it's just amazing how we can contact each other now Quebec Poland New Jersey Springfield Ohio from Massachusetts living in New Hampshire uh, no I'm not going to be doing a channel on off-grid living whatever that whole thing uh, before but uh, Memphis Minnesota Northern Ireland. All right. Looks good. Um, so 
Georgia. That's great. South Africa. That's a Viking burial mounds here in Ontario. Yeah, I've heard some of that. Um, New Jersey. Amen to the scripture there, Chantre. Um, Finland. Okay. Pennsylvania. Timbuktu. <laughs> South England, Canada. Yeah, I, I get it. You're joking there. I get it. Chile. UK. So we still have about two minutes yet, and we'll get started. So Australia. Ryan, have you ever been to Ghana? No. The only two uh, foreign countries outside of America that I've ever been into is uh, Costa Rica and Honduras. You know, flown into other countries and things in Central America, but that's as far as I've ever gone. So, Arizona, Georgia. There's one that says hello, Oliver, right there. Say your name. Oliver. Mm -hmm. All right, nine fifty-nine. Do you speak any other languages? Um, no. <laughs> Not really a, a few words here and there of German and and uh, yeah I, I wish I could speak German more fluently but I I don't really speak it very well. What? I like to see what all you showing and how the life. Okay, well, we're going to be getting started now. So. Okay, um, it's about 10 o'clock now, so we're going to start out. I'm going to start out with just a prayer. Um, uh, start out with a little quick prayer here, and then I'm going to talk about the different subjects I want to discuss. And there, I'm really going to be relying a lot on people's input. Um, so but let's, let's begin with a word of prayer. Um, dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you would be in our midst today. and and um, I really, really would like to have some wise counsel from my brothers and sisters in Christ out there, um, because ultimately this channel is not just about me, it's about the body of Christ and uh, what we should do moving forward. And um, I do pray, Lord, that there would be a, a, a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind in this live stream, and that uh, if there's any enemies, they would be respectful and uh, not just come here to cause trouble, but... Um, I just pray, Lord, that you would please help us to come to a decision that would be worthy of thy name and of thy holy word. And I pray it all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, five basic things that I want to talk about today um, here. 
um, as I stated on, over on my announcement on Rumble, um, doing a live stream on Rumble would be $25 a month. And I don't really see the point of doing that right now at this point in time. Um, but first we're, go we're going to study or we're going to look at the thing of uh, why did I change the channel name? What's my scripture for it? And whatever um, the born again barbarian thing. And some thoughts on that plans for the future, possible plans. Number two, the problems that I'm having with Rumble. Okay. Number three, YouTube's future. Talk about that. Number four, I'm going to talk a little bit, a little tiny bit about my new book that I'm that I finished writing. And um, number five, uh, our housing situation, which is another thing that's been kind of a little weird over the last, you know, two years or so, um, because of everything that's going on with the pand pandemic thing. Um, so, new channel name. What's the deal? What's the big situation there? Well, King James Bible, the, the word barbarian. Let's talk about that for a minute here. Um, Colossians chapter 3 verse 11 says where there is neither Greek nor Jew circumcision nor uncircumcision Barbarian Scythian bond nor free but Christ is all and in all now my position in terms of eternity is I'm saved I'm in the body of Christ um, a Christian okay um, that's what I am so we're all in Christ if I have a black brother or sister that's watching right now we're brothers and sisters in Christ there's it's there's no distinction between us in terms of well I'm a white Christian and you're a black Christian. No. Uh, Orientals or whoever you are, wherever you are, we're all one in Christ. But the distinctions are still there in terms of physically, obviously. Um, there's different things going on. You read the book of Romans. There's things between the circumcision and the uncircumcision. Um, the circumcision being the Jews, uncircumcision being the Gentiles. So what we've been doing over the years uh, my wife and I have been really trying to say, okay, what is the full extent of what, where does the Lord want us to under, or be or whatever in our process of sanctification? Um, my family is, has been in America for a long time, about 300 years. It was when the first Denlingers came here to America, and um, we were settled down in Pennsylvania and everything. But, uh, you know, where did the Denlinger family come from? You say, well... Bavaria, essentially Germany, and most of my ancestry goes back to Germany or Switzerland. But then my grandmother, my maternal grandmother, was Scottish, the Campbell clan. And so, uh, you know anything about that if you're from Scotland? Um, so, you know, uh, and I say, okay, well, then that's kind of what I identify with, but there's really nothing in the Bible about that. And so we got to talking about this. My wife has really done a lot of study into the thing of all the different kindreds and everything and studying history going back through. How does how has the Catholic Church attacked and conquered so many people? You know, I did a lot of research myself into the Viking era and how that the Vikings never really lost to the Catholic system. They were just merged into it. <clears throat> Their culture was gradually destroyed and brought into Roman Catholicism. Rome has gone about conquering, if you understand the temporal sword of Roman Catholicism. They believe that they have spiritual and temporal power. All right. The spiritual is all matters of religion. They are to control it. Temporal, all politics, all nations, everything else are, are to be subjected to or subjugated, excuse me, to the Roman Catholic system. So um, reversing back in time, what would my ancestors have been called uh, in the first century, in the Bible times? Um, we weren't Romans. Okay, we were, uh, we would have been called barbarians. I'll show you another one here, uh, or uh, we'll discuss another one here. I have my sword searcher software up here. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 10. There are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them is without signification. Therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall be unto him that speaketh a barbarian, and he that speaketh shall be a barbarian unto me. All right. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 11 speaks again of these barbarians. And people would say, well, that's a sort of a derogatory thing. Well, not necessarily. Uh, Webster's 1820 dictionary defines barbarian as a noun, Latin for barbarous, 
uh, <clears throat> the senses far and wild fears. Uh, definition number one, a man in his rude, savage state, an uncivilized person. Well, I've kind of gotten that one put on me different times. <clears throat> um, I'm kind of rude, but savage and uncivilized, many people think. Uh, number two, a cruel, savage, brutal man, one destitute of pity or humanity. There they have it. Um, again, people have said that about me. But here's the one, number three, that would be kind of what first century people in Rome would have thought of. Um, <clears throat> A foreigner. The Greeks and Romans denominated most foreign nations barbarians, and many of these were less civilized than themselves or unacquainted with their language, laws, and manners. But with them, the word was less reproachful than with us. Okay, so I'm not, uh, you know, what a lot of people would call civilized or whatever else. So, um, you know, I've had a lot of my enemies attack me, you know, he's just some uneducated, you know, lives out in the middle of nowhere and whatever else. Well, I, I'm, I'm not uneducated, you know, uh, but uh, at least according to, you know, the truth, according to their system, I'm uneducated. But, uh, you know, I'm not uncomfortable with the thing of, you're not really civilized, you're not really, you know, really all that hip with the, what goes on in the city. Um, not a problem. That's not really an insult to me. Uh, I'm out of style, you know, I know, Red and black buffalo plaid, it sends my enemies into fits. They just get all upset about it. And my my long beard, oh, it's just terrible. And, you know, I have a sheep skin hide here that I can wear if it's really cold outside. That's my new picture, you know, and it's a sheep skin. Uh, and I have weapons hanging around and things, and, you know. So that's the barbarian idea there. You know, uh, I can't just say born again German or born again, you know, I want to use a biblical term, barbarian. And um, that's the way the lost world thinks about me as far as, you know, the barbarian. But uh, if you also study the thing of a lot of ancient history, it was the barbaric tribes that ultimately destroyed Rome temporally. And then they merged and became the Catholic Church. And then they came in with their missionaries and everything else and subjugated all the different barbaric tribes eventually. But um, I believe that going forward into the future, people are going to have to start to go back to that, you know, what we'd be called uncivilized. Oh, you're, you're not, uh, I guess, uh, you know, I, well, whatever, uh, you're not unvac you're uh, unvaccinated or something. So therefore, you know, we have to uh, single you out and whatever else. You see, uh, where's your pass at? Where's your face mask at? Where's this? Where's that? You know, whatever. Hey, somebody wants to go get a vaccine, whatever, that's a, their decision. Somebody wants to put a face mask on, whatever. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter. But don't impose that stuff on me. Um, you know, and it's funny because I might do a study on this in the future. I'll just kind of do a little spoiler thing on this. I got to thinking about it and I thought, you know, it's kind of an interesting thing. There's actually a scripture. Let me look it up here really quickly. I think it's in... Second Timothy three, First Timothy and Second Tim Timothy. Some of the stuff I get kind of mixed up in my mind. Yeah, Second Timothy chapter three, verse one. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Um, and you get down through to uh, verse three. It says, "Fierce despisers of those that are good." And I think about some of these people. I've seen some of the stuff where they'll come out and, and they see somebody that doesn't have a face mask on in the store. And people will yell at them and they'll get angry at them and everything. And, you know, a lot of people like that. I mean, families breaking up over the thing of, you know, who's received the shot, who hasn't. And I'm thinking, hmm, fierce, despisers of those that are good. You know, you don't often see, I mean, maybe there's some out there. People are nuts nowadays, but I, you don't, I haven't seen very much of the opposite of people attacking those who have taken the shot or those that are wearing the mask. Could be some out there, but. I just thought that was kind of an interesting thing there. Um, <clears throat> so that's the reason for the name change to Barbarian. Okay, now obviously born again, if you don't understand that, well, it's kind of a problem. Um, there's some hyper dispensationalists that say that, you know, being born again is not for us today, which is nonsense, absolute nonsense. John chapter three talks about Jesus says, you know, a man must be born again. Just saying the basics there of it. Um, 
receiving the new birth. You're a new creature in Christ Jesus. That's in the Pauline epistles. So does it say born again is that exact wording? Well, no, but you know, you can see plainly that you're a new creature in Christ Jesus. You receive the spirit of adoption. You know, there's a lot of things in there. So um, <clears throat> that's the reason for the channeling change. And another reason that I, I did that is because I still use YouTube. I do watch people's videos. And and I like to come in there and say, OK, if they say I, I'll listen to them as I'm doing other work and I can, you know, listen. I have two monitors here at my computer work area. So I'll put a somebody's video over here and I'm doing my work over here. And a lot of times I'll see lost people and they'll actually say some things that I'm thinking, OK, the Holy Spirit, I think, is starting to kind of, you know, put little seeds of truth there. And I'd like to actually, you know, say something, give them some scripture, or give say some kind of a witness type of a thing where, you know, it can make them start to think and make them start to realize, hey, you know what, there could be something more to everything here. Um, and so, you know, the old channel name, Brian Denley or KJVM Brian Denley, well, it's kind of doesn't really have any kind of. People don't know what KJVM means. And so I can't use King James Radio Ministries because another brother has a channel, a mirror channel of mine, and he puts up all the videos and good playlists and whatever else, with all with my permission. He does a great job, and I'm very thankful for that. And so um, that's why I don't use, I can't use King James Radio Ministries. And my secondary channel is KJ video, KJV ministries or kj video ministries or something and um so i just thought i'd like to kind of come in with a new sounding title and if i decide to do some stuff which we'll talk about this here in a little bit and i want to get people's opinions on it um if i decide to do some videos going forward on youtube it would probably be evangelistic type of things trying to evangelize the lost world and um and at that point, I might actually do um, sort of a, a different backdrop than my my books here behind me and everything. Um, maybe some outdoor stuff, but um, I have a different design for my mind of the born again barbarian look. Possibly even a, a different website because KingJamesVideoMinistries.com is kind of a little long. So I'm thinking I might come up with some shorter. Thing relating to the born again barbarian channel still very much praying about this again i'd like to hear people's thoughts on that as we continue so that's the new channel name whole thing there so moving on to point number two and when we get done with all this stuff then we can do questions and answers and whatever else uh point number two rumble if you're not aware i've been over on rumble since i left youtube in april of this previous year 2021 um and rumble's been pretty good i haven't been censored over there yet that i know of i mean they can always kind of shadow ban and all that other stuff i don't know if any of that's going on it seems to be that the everything works okay but the problem is i've had new many people and they come along and they say the rumble videos do not play on my computer i don't know why i don't know if it's some kind of a my website browser doesn't want to play them or whatever else i've had that as a complaint quite a few times a lot of people just say sorry i can't watch you it's you know i just i can't do anything on that you know rumble platform um there's that the other issue that i have probably the biggest issue i have with rumble is that it's very difficult if not next to impossible to download the videos and I've had quite a few people contact me and say that they used to um, download my videos off of YouTube, which is a lot easier. And then they would burn them to a DVD or like a USB drive or something. Um, and then they send them to elderly people that aren't really computer savvy and whatever. And that one really hits home with me because I think, oh, yeah, you know, I mean, I have. Um, some older relatives actually that I know of that you know that, that aren't real 
great with uh, computers and things. And, you know, um, it would, it's nice to be able to have stuff on YouTube that can be sent to them. So that's another issue with Rumble. Um, so uh, number three, YouTube future. Um, the future of YouTube. Again, um, when I made my last video in April of last year, the censorship was just full speed, you know, crazy. I mean, I was getting, you know, it, it was funny because YouTube could have easily destroyed my channel and they decided not to for whatever reason. Um, you know, they, you know, understanding how a lot of the alg algorithm type of stuff works, they actually want negativity. So, you know, I'm helping to feed certain algorithms by, you know, causing a lot of strife and whatever else among lost people. They get mad at what I said and whatever. Um, and so YouTube, it wasn't that they were going to ch take my channel down, but it just, I, they kept doing this copyright strike stuff. So I couldn't make videos for a while. If you were around back when that whole debacle was going on, I mean, it was literally, um, I mean, it, it was crazy. Some of the stuff, I, I think the one within about two or three days, I, I forget what it was. They deleted something like eight videos or something, you know, of mine just just deleting my videos and that was driving me crazy and so the original intent of my final video was i was going to ask the brethren should i it, it, should i delete the youtube channel should i continue and I, it came out and i said um you know is it a sin for me to continue on youtube was the title of the video and i never really asked that question to the brethren you know i mean it was kind of there a little bit you know put your comment down below but it was not really it's up to you um my supporters the body of christ i just kind of made the decision on my own because i was really ticked off at the time um just to say this going back in time i was very much against computers and the internet and everything else and the reason being is because I didn't want some pencil necked geek over some other area, some little you know person controlling what I say. That ticks me off. Um, all these people at YouTube, if they would actually have the guts and the nerve to come here and confront me to my face and say, "You aren't allowed to say this. You aren't allowed to say that. Here are our policies," you know, that'd be a different story because I would actually have some respect for somebody. You know, I guess I'm. Too barbaric for that to happen you know they they'd be a little afraid to stand up to me or whatever you know and i'm not trying to be prideful i'm just simply saying i prefer people to actually come and here i am you know this stupid thief that comes around our property sneaks in there when i'm not there you know or at night when i'd be asleep and whatever but that's the nature of a thief they're cowards but you know it just i have respect for some guy that comes up and, and talks to me to my face and says hey I have a problem with you in this issue or whatever else. And so I've always been, I've had that little attitude against the internet for that reason. And so it really angered me when YouTube was just going after my preaching and teaching and just striking stuff down. And the whole time that they're doing it, my they're monetizing my videos as well. That was another thing that really angered me, making me look like a hypocrite because I say I don't take ad revenue from YouTube and I never have. But yet they're monetizing my videos so it comes to the end of my videos and i say you know we don't take any money from the lost world and people are probably thinking to themselves but there's been ads in your videos what are you talking about so that was another big issue with me again what do i do do i go back and delete all my old videos where i say that you know it, it just really ticked me off so i just finally i was so mad when i did that study and i said you know what essentially i don't even care what anybody says I'm not continuing on this platform. Shouldn't have done that. I should have actually sought the counsel of the body of Christ on it first. What do you think? So I've had a lot of time. Um, I had a lot of time to go back and kind of reconsider things. And, you know, I don't know. Um, it's not about views. Uh, it's not any kind of a thing of, you know, I'm going to become uh 
I want to get to a million subscribers or something like that. I mean, that would be a terrible headache. <laughs> be just awful. But the other thing is about YouTube, I've been contacted by a number of people since I left YouTube, but my videos are still here. And I've been contacted by a number of people that have actually said that they've gotten saved as a result of my videos. So I'm thankful that I left my stuff up for that reason, if for no other reason. People are still getting saved. People are still really coming to a knowledge of the truth. So I praise the Lord for that. So, I, you know, oh, I should have just deleted the channel, moved on with my life. Well, then those people might not have, you know, I mean, they, the Lord could still lead them to salvation some other way. But what I'm saying is, um, you know, doing what I've done over the years, you know, where I started out actually making DVDs, King James Video Ministry started out as producing you know professional dvds and i was getting into documentary filmmaking and then i thought you know if i just give away everything for free i could affect a lot more change and whatever and that's what i've done and it's it's been a big um a big sacrifice over the years for us to have done that but the lord's used it so um but you know one of the things i prayed about one of the things i've thought about is if I come back to YouTube, um, I cannot have my speech. I can't censor my speech when I'm preaching. If the Lord tells me to say something, I'm going to say it. Now, I can come back and, you know, put up a sermon or something. And, oh, if they take it down, they take it down. But then I'm back to playing little head games with YouTube people. And that irritates me. That irritates me a lot. So if I keep my preaching on Rumble, but... I'm thinking, should I start to use this platform here on YouTube to sort of evangelize the lost? And you say, but you still have to, you would still have to, um, you know, censor your speech. Well, here's the point. Okay, something to think about. And I'd like people's input when we're done with this whole thing. Uh, the Waldensians, they would send young men down into Vatican City during the Dark Ages. Now, they had to censor their speech when they went down in there. Why? Because if they didn't, they would be killed. So you can't just go down in there and say, you know, Jesus saves, but Rome enslaves. That won't work at that point in time. You have to be able to go in, if you're going to evangelize the lost, and come in and say, okay, um, straight up conversations. They would come in as silk merchants and, and things, the Waldensians. And so they would come in and they would say, you know, um, it's a beautiful day, isn't it? You know, and talk about things like that. Um, and then they would share the gospel as they could. So what I'm saying is, I see Michael Dorado there, you're saying, what do you mean uh, censor? What I mean by censor is, I know the things that YouTube says you're not allowed to talk about. Okay, can I get around that? Do I have to talk about that? What does it mean to be born again? Do I have to bring coronavirus into it? Well, no, I don't. Uh, I don't have to bring in that. I don't have to say scamdemic or whatever else, other little buzzwords that get me in trouble. Um, so should I use YouTube as a platform to bring people to the preaching of that happens over a rumble where I can speak without being censored? And um, yeah, so that's another thing there. Um, and as far as monetized videos, that's pretty much a thing on the internet now, unfortunately. Um, I was trying to do my videos over on uh, Rumble uh, without monetization, and then I started having videos that were not coming up, and I would try to re-upload them and, you know, re-upload the, those, and it was just terrible. And so, um, you know, the... I had to eventually let my channel be monetized over on Rumble, which I explained that. And um, I think my grand total that I've, you know, that they say I've made, I haven't, I'm not even going to bother trying to cash anything in. I don't care. But uh, the grand total out they say I've made is $8 so far. So, boy, yeah, you know, I'm right up there with all the billionaires, I guess. <laughs> um, so, uh, um, We'll come back to that whole thing of what I should do here in just a, a minute or two. Um, new book. Uh, hopefully, Lord willing, will be out in January. Um, I have Brother J. 
Jacob is helping me right now. He's going to get things kind of formatted a little bit nicer and whatever. He's better at making books than I am. So um, I thought I'm going to actually go through a publisher for my first book and we'll see how that goes. And then it'll be through Lulu, probably .com. Go through an actual publisher and then see how it goes with the book. And then if I decide to write more controversial stuff, I'll probably do, you know, just sort of booklets that I can produce myself, depending on how it goes. We'll see. Um, and then finally, our housing situation uh, right now, um, I'll, I'll probably do a bigger um, announcement on this in the future. Or not an announcement, but sort of a prayer request type of a thing. Um, we bought Bear Land in 2017. Actually, in 2013, we bought Bear Land in Maine for the first time. Came up and bought a house to live in while we were building on our uh, vacant land that we had. And if you know anything about the story, the drama of everything that unfolded, it was a nightmare. We had a terrible Roman Catholic neighbor, drunken slob, and he was just a nightmare. Ended up, you know, he's built on our, our legal easement, uh, blocking us from going back to our property. I mean, it was terrible. And then he died, went to hell, and definitely went to hell. I mean, he rejected the gospel. I preached it to him, went to hell, and um, and and we didn't take any joy in that. We were trying to witness to him, to him for years, for four years, essentially. Um, we witnessed to that guy. Uh, well, actually, about three years, I should say, till the time he died, a little over three years. And we were essentially forced to sell our property because his place went up for um, auction. So it was kind of this weird situation. Sold it, bought our current property, and I, I have been struggling to build anything back in there um, just because of the workload that we're under. Had our place up in Bridgewater, bought this place here in the town of Patton, uh, Maine. Um, and again, we've been, you know, the, when the everything hit with the pandemic, the lumber prices went crazy, and then the housing prices went berserk last year. Uh, you know, inflated the price of housing. It was just insane. The hedge funds and a bunch of other things they did that. Zillow was in on it as well, but that's a whole other issue. And so now we're in this weird predicament where I'm hearing a lot of bad stories about supply chain shortages, you know, even down to screws and nails and the basics of building a place. So I'm thinking, okay, um, do we build or do we try to buy a nearby property or something that actually has a house on it? Um, there's a lot of issues there. So I'll be doing more on that in the future. But if you could just pray for our housing situation, um, that's another issue right there. So, uh, but getting back to it, I'd like to actually, I'm going to start looking at the comments now. I, I just been glancing over there, but um, what do people think? I mean, should I use YouTube to evangelize the people, evangelize the lost, just little short videos that link over to the main preaching on, on uh, Rumble? Um, I, you know, if maybe if I would do a sermon that doesn't, you know, that doesn't violate YouTube's ridiculous censorship. Um, maybe I could put that over here on YouTube or something, but I don't know. I don't know what to do there. So you can go ahead and start posting comments. Um, what are your thoughts out there? To everybody out there, um, use YouTube and reopen the comments. Uh, read, Ryan. Uh, I have asked God, but there's also the thing of asking the body of Christ and a multitude of counselors, their safety, the Bible talks about. Um, stick with it until they remove you, brother. Make them remove you from their platform. That's another thing I can do. Evangelizing the lost, guarding your words, splitting the content sounds like a good idea. Uh, go as long as you possibly can to reach the masses. Okay, the comments are going to get... Yes, use YouTube, but start a new channel so the videos here are safe. Um, Absolutes, what if you find like a pre-made tiny home and have it moved onto your property? Well, we already do have a tiny home, um, which is leading to some organizational organization issues. <laughs> um, 
the more you reach, the better. You can do a lot with 50 pounds of loose, 16 pounds. You know, barbarian and member, violent or uncivilized people. Yeah. Um, stay on YouTube. Use it as redirect service and hit up BitChute. Tried BitChute. BitChute was censoring me, so no. I a BitChute. Um, uh, I think there are still ways to use YouTube and work around things. There must be a better name, brother. There isn't. Um, New York is the New Year is the spring. This is the New Year on the Gregorian calendar. Yeah. Um, uh, things going really fast. Um, okay. Let's see. Do you still use? Do you still have? Tiny house that you made for using a reefer truck. Yes. Um, post link on YouTube, then go to Rumble. Uh, it didn't know you're in the Jewish yet. Okay. Um, okay. Come back to YouTube full time and don't be afraid to monetize. All forms of money are worldly institutions, so no matter what you do, all money eventually crosses hands of wicked men. May I understand what you're saying? Um, I just, I've taken stands against it for so many years, you know, what do I do? See, I know my enemies are going to use that against me. Oh, look, at he's monetized and all this other stuff. You know, uh, I would say post on here. It will give your Rumble channel more visibility as well. Uh, who's the Antichrist? Well, that's another issue. I, I said, I think you should do whatever you feel is right. More people will find your videos on YouTube compared with Rumble. So put some evangelistic sermons up, okay? Preach milk doctrine, gospel salvation, blood atonement. Do you meet preaching on Rumble? <clears throat> Leave links on here for other platforms. Good suggestion. Personally, I find YouTube so much better. Uh, Katrina Wadi there. Uh, Christian Lewis. Rumble for more controversial stuff. The COVID scam thing. And YouTube for studies and for announcing Rumble videos. Uh, okay. Roger Pinch. Please keep making videos on YouTube. The world needs them. Abraham. I think you should... Still utilize your YouTube channel to reach the lost, especially during times like these. I think it would be a great opportunity. <clears throat> um, Ryan Griffiths, use them both or leave the YouTube channel up because all of your videos are a great resource. I go back through and watch the ones from a couple years ago to answer questions friends have. Yeah, that was another thing I, I encountered early on. I thought I really need to do a lot of preaching on a lot of different subjects because people can use them kind of as online video tracks almost. Good point, Ryan. Um, Patrick Nolan. I don't have friends, and there are like two or three people I can stand to find a way and be somewhere. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, Megasite 84, ride the train, YouTube train for as long as possible. All right. Um, ah, thing just kind of updated, and I went zipping past a whole bunch of people there. Uh, Um, okay, uh, Nomad HGNIS, you could do, you could do and should short video like Israel and Israeli News Live and put in that description the full video on another platform. I cannot effects remove the space. Okay, NB88, use YouTube for whatever good you can. Um, well, thank you. Um, lies and hypocrisy unmasked, Bobby Barrett and Think March, but not certain. Not really sure on that one. Anthony Timonello, I will leave your Rumble videos on Rumble, but use YouTube for as long as you can. Okay. <clears throat> DDS, you are still watching your old, we are still watching your old videos. Leave it for the testimony of the lost. Paul Davidson, can you keep up your true Bible teaching videos on YouTube? Because people search for things here. There are many fake teachers on there. At least you're teaching the truth. Okay. Audrey DKS, Ryan, you could return to bases on for preaching on this very channel and for more forbidden contact redirect it to Rumble. Okay, that's a lot of what I'm thinking there. Um, as a wicked flea, they've made it possible to speak freely, Brian. Uh, there's, I'm seeing more people talking about this COVID thing and kind of coming out against it and whatever, so I'm wondering if they're kind of having to fall back a little bit on their strict censorship from before because a lot of people are just saying yeah this is nonsense um <clears throat> i don't know um always found that your videos were like none other i had found they're helpful and i don't think giving up on youtube is the answer telegram is also a platform that may be worth looking into never heard of telegram that's interesting um uh 
Coily and Ludbrick home or straw bale, maybe. Um, yeah, I actually had a cousin build a straw or a straw bale home uh, down in Lancaster County. <clears throat> um, Bobby Barrett, thank you, brother. Anthony Rendon, question Can you possibly put out a sermon on the fear of the Lord? There are many fake Christians who have no fear of the Lord. Uh, yeah. Um, Ministry of Truth, use both platforms. You'll reach a wider audience. There are a lot more conspiracists on Rumble. They seem to think they will find truth there. So you may as well give them it. Jenny Ann, please stay on YouTube. My lost adult son watches your videos. I know God is using your ministry, videos to minister to him. Praise the Lord. Um, it's neat to hear. Um, Sirius C, upload to Odyssey. Don't know anything about that. I mean, I've heard of it, but I don't know anything about it. Uh, Jay Camillo, I would continue to use YouTube. Sandy Smith, we still have to fulfill the Great Commission. That's most important since we're in the end times, thinking more and more of those crowns in heaven. Um, Aaron Evett, I think use Rumble for the more controversial videos and YouTube for the rest. You could put the link to your Rumble in the description of your YouTube videos. Um, okay, Jenny Hartnett, YouTube, I'm assuming is what the little red thing there is, play button. Uh, rhubarb giraffe. Uh, use both. <laughs> That's a funny name. Uh, uh, Big Pat, hey Ryan, I'm 18 years old and I finished high school in June. If I don't go to college, I'm kicked out of house. Aviation schools accepted me thinking of maritime industry for place to live. Thoughts. But we can get into some questions and answers later. But, you know, in military at this point in time, you're going to have to have the shot. So I don't recommend that at all. The shot's toxic. It's bad stuff. Samuel 528, keep the YouTube channel up. Make your new videos directing to your rumble. Sounds like a good plan. James, you can use multiple websites to hit the most people. I, I would keep the YouTube channel. Maybe try out Odyssey. Dr. Engineer, I watch your videos on YouTube repeatedly. Your videos have helped me tremendously. Well, praise the Lord. I believe you can still use YouTube to service the gospel while other, using other platforms as well. God bless you. Um, E. Finelli, uh, hi, nice to see you. I prayed for you and your family. Thank you. I, and I just want to say, you know, with my, my father passing away um, just right before Christmas, uh, I had a really hard time. You know, when I actually heard the news, it was pretty bad. Um, it was pretty rough. My dad and I were really close. But, man, I had a lot of peace, a whole lot of peace. And I said it in one of my studies recently on Rumble, but I know it was the body of Christ praying for me. Because there is no other way. That, hold on, son. There's no other way that I can add that level of peace. I'm just not strong enough for that. So I have to get through these comments. What do you need to say? Can I go? Uh, no, okay. no, you don't. No, you don't need to tell anything there. Sword user, if you are in Egypt, YouTube, don't compromise. Be truthful to leave it. Leave if you want YouTube to have hastier judgment. I understand what you're saying there, Egypt being a type of the world. Um, just me, shouldn't you be, we fo be following the Enoch calendar, spring, new year? Uh, another topic there. Um, the flat earth thing, um, you know, I'm open to discussing things with people. I'm not anti-flat earth, but I'm not pro-flat earth. I just, you know, a lot of people, it's a distraction. They get off in that whole thing, and that's all that there is anymore. A lot of people do the same thing with a holiday issue. Oh, you can't celebrate Christmas. And then that's everything funnels through that. Then, you know, judging people's salvation and everything else. So, um, okay. Uh, um, Okay. I think I'm through most of them here. Okay. Uh, I think I caught up. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> There's a lot of ones down here. Um, Okay, just mostly I'm seeing that, you know, most of you are saying that, you know, stay with YouTube. And, you know, 
everything is changing so fast, you know, I mean, you know, uh, just the thing of, you know, if you'd have written this stuff down, you know, take a newspaper from today and take it back, you know, 20 years ago and people would say, no, there's no way. <laughs> just bizarre, weird stuff is going on. And so for me to say, you know, here's my plans for the future, you know, and I'm just going to kind of write this out and there, this is how it'll work out. I know what the Bible teaches and that's what I look forward to, but trying to figure out this nutty world man uh it's very crazy so um okay it kind of answers my question um okay i'll just say this another little vote for my viewers out there um the idea of short videos or longer videos which would be better just write short or long I'd like to see your thoughts on that, please. If you could just say, I, I think short I, short videos, just as a way to introduce people to biblical subjects, or you know, longer preaching. You know, what do you, what do people think? Both. <laughs> short, long, short, long, long off platform. There you go. Long, long, long. Short, both, both long. Short links to the long ones on other platforms. Okay. Uh, okay. So I'm seeing, you know, pretty much across the board, it's kind of both, you know, a lot are saying short, some are saying, you know, long. So, you know, uh, yeah, like when I did the FAQ video series, yeah. It's kind of a lot of what I was thinking about. Um, you know, I was actually on a, a heathen um, channel. Um, there's a guy in, in Norway, um, Bjorn Andreas Bull Hansen, and he's been standing against this COVID thing for a long time. And uh, he really has some character that I respect. He's got long hair and the whole thing. I know what the Bible teaches. I used to have long hair as a lost man, so I'm not going to be too rough on the guy or whatever else. but he just seems like a guy that has some character to him and he's very well spoken and everything. And I, I respect a lot of the stands that he's taken. And I mean, you know, I see Baptists and they're, you know, they're making excuses and, Oh, you know, we had to do stuff. Amen. And all that. And just, the, you know, uh, yeah, Russell brand, you know, I've seen some of his stuff and whatever else. And I mean, these guys are coming out and they're, they're really, you know, they're really saying a lot of really good stuff. And I, and I have a love in my heart for that. Somebody that loves the truth. A man, yeah, I respect other real men. Saved or lost, you know, it doesn't matter. I respect real men. You know, again, to explain a Bible-believing stand, we believe in liberty of conscience, okay? Um, I, you know, I would have a lost guy as my neighbor. Yeah, I do have, you know, people as my neighbors and, and things. And there's some really tough neighbors that I have, and they're, strong and they get work done and, and whatever else they come over and help me with my lane sometimes and whatever i appreciate that and i do what i can to help people that are also in need but you know i've there's this thing of you know the the heathen hangout that bjorn was having the one time and i remember there was a guy in the comments and he said you know, it was a live stream and this guy put a comment up and he said i'm an atheist and i'm seeing people around me dying and i'm actually starting to think about what happens after death and i'm really wondering about that and you know boy that that kind of thing just gets to me and i think man you know because people have seen that the churches are false now the church building is totally folded and went along i mean almost 100 percent of them just went completely along with shutting down and that should have never happened ever you know, um, especially the charismaniacs. That's the one that cracks me up. You know, all we can heal you, be healed. You know, they whack you on the forehead and everything. You can't heal somebody over a something that's essentially the flu. You know, how's that work? But uh, oh, you know, they're that's right. I guess they couldn't get money from it or something, so that's why they shut down. But but there's lost people that are actually starting to see loved ones dropping dead around them, and they're starting to ask some real questions. And the world that we once knew. Uh, we're not going back. 
unfortunately. And that's been a hard thing for me too. And I know a lot of other brethren I've spoken with, you just start to realize, you know, it isn't going to be, you know, the preacher of rapture teaching of imminence is that it's just happy kind of good times. I mean, you, normal persecution you go through as a Christian, but then it's just any time and up you go. Well, the resurrection will be in an instant, a moment in an instant, twi twinkling of an eye. That's true. But to say it could happen in 1842 and the time of Jacob's trouble could get started in 2033 or something like that, that's not that's not accurate. And that's why I had to come out and speak against this whole thing. I mean, I'm a hardcore militant, what would be called pre-trib rapture preacher. Sure, but it's not imminent. There's going to be a lot of bad things that happen that lead to the time of Jacob's trouble, and the Lord will resurrect the body of Christ before the Antichrist shows up. So, but, you know, it's kind of weird, you know, because for so many years I was thinking it was just going to be sort of, you know, everything's nice and you can go to restaurants and you can go and do whatever you want and they won't lock things down and you lock you in your home and you can't go places and and the insanity of this whole thing that's been going on, you know, I can hand you cash at the cash register and you're safe because you're behind an eighth inch of plexiglass. Okay, and you can get the coins out and give them back to me and no disease is transmitted. <laughs> You know, I just think, huh? You know, and the whole thing has had so many of those moments where you're just smacking yourself in the forehead going, what is this? This is weird, you know? And, you know, my carnal mind, I'm thinking, boy, I hope it goes back to the way it used to be. I mean, it, yeah, the world was always messed up and everything. But, you know, I've just been thinking, I hopefully it'll go back. And it just it's not going back. And that's why I did the video. I actually showed the black pope, the head of the Jesuit order. And he said about, you know, that many will kind of say that we wanted to go back to before, you know, the nightmare began. And he said, no, no, it's, we're not going back. And he was saying that before they really kicked this whole thing into high gear. Um, again, if you don't understand the Jesuit order, look at Fauci's a Jesuit, Trump's a Jesuit trained, uh, all these different guys, Gavin Newsom, Andrew Cuomo, these guys are all Jesuit trained. And they go through training. You get up into the high levels of academia. I mean, the low barbaric people, you know, all we want to do is just go out and cut our firewood and go fishing, you know, and and you can't wait for hunting season to come around. And, hey, it'll be great. You can get some uh, wild grouse or something for Christmas celebration. Or, you know, that's what we're thinking. And get together with family and have a job. And, you know, we have our dreams and things. But the people in the at the top levels of academia, the World Economic Forum with Klaus Schwab and everything, all these different guys. And these guys are all, you know, scheming and planning and doing all this other stuff. And it's just weird. Um, so, uh, you know, that's that's been another thing that's been really odd through this whole process. And, you know, just the thing of getting off of YouTube and getting away from YouTube and then you know, thinking I, I, because I didn't know, you know, is YouTube going to go down more? Is, you know, will people still be using it? Will a lot of people leave? Again, uh, Darren Lanier, the guy who, one of the original creators of uh, virtual reality, right there, read his book and he talked about, uh, he called it network effect or something, network lock effect. And he said that people will stay in a certain system say on Facebook or Meta now, whatever that is. And they'll stay in that until enough people leave. And so I was thinking, you know, are we going to be able to get away from YouTube here and people come over to Rumble and hopefully the services will get better over there. And it, it's improved a little, but it's it's still not the same as here on YouTube. So yeah. Um but anyhow um, okay, that answers my question then. Um, I'll see what I can do with coming back to YouTube. Uh, thank you to everybody out there that gave your input. I really do appreciate that. And I am sorry, and I will publicly apologize that I did not consult the body of Christ first and my viewers.
you know, um, there are some people that you have questions and I respect that um, for crying out loud. Don't just make some decision and pray some quick prayer. And there I'm a Christian now and I'm going to go to church on Sunday and give 10 percent of my tithe um, and then I'll get to heaven for sure. No, you need to have things worked out between you and God. OK, um, and you can be born again and look rather barbaric to the lost world. So, hello. Um, so, uh, that pretty much answers my question, I think. Um, so, I guess we can do some uh, questions and answers um, here now. Um, if people want to ask any questions, I'll try my best to answer them. Um, okay. Okay. Um, let me see here. I'll, I'll have to do this over here. Um, I'll try to put some comments up here and, and answer some people. Okay. Nunya Business. Good day, Brian. I've uh, been with my significant other for over 20 years. We never married through the state because I never believed in getting their permission. How can I marry her the way God intended? Um, you know, if you're a uh, man and a, and a woman, you need to, you know, what we did when we got married is we went um, and got both parents, both my parents and my wife's parents, and we had a little small ceremony together, made it very plain. We we're going to be living together as husband and wife, and we, the inside of our Bible, we have it that there's a marriage coverture in there. Um, my father-in-law signed his name, that he was okay with the marriage, My and then my father signed his name. Um, as witnesses and then there were two other brethren there and they signed their names as witnesses and then we just had a little small ceremony went through Ephesians chapter 5 and um, that was basically it I mean we you know then we had like a little just you know a little time of fellowship and a little party I guess you could call it whatever else nothing extravagant whatever just had some food and talked and whatever else the whole point is um, that uh, I did a video on the thing of marriage coverture versus state marriage licenses. Uh, state marriage license, the problem with them is you are basically putting somebody between you and God. So, um, and when you get married by the state, then they also have some legal title to your children. Children, like this one here. And, um, you know, and, and why do people do state marriage license? Because they can, you know, they get tax incentives and tax bonuses and, or not bonuses but they you know they can write it off in their taxes and things so that's why I say stay away from state marriage licenses there's no scripture um, for going to the state and being married by the state and there's a lot of false prophets out there and they say that my wife and I have been living um, in sin or whoremongering or something because we don't have a state marriage license and uh, my simple answer to that is okay show me that in scripture and then I'll repent um, so Uh, okay, I have been struggling with sin. I also have watched most of your videos on here and Rumble. Any tips for ending the lust of the flesh? Thanks. Well, you can't really end it. Okay, you will always struggle with your flesh. But having said that, the way that you put your flesh down is through the biblical process of sanctification. First, you need to be born again. You must be born again. Uh, watch our salvation message on, on our uh, channel here on YouTube. After you get born again, you need to have a King James Bible. If you're English speaking, uh, if you're not English, if, if English is not your first language, then get a close, you know, translation to that. One that comes from the received text. You have to do some research on your own there. But then the process of sanctification. Get away from television is the big one. Okay, television is designed with very high levels of mind control. I'm not joking. That's why they have all these real good looking women with low cut tops and shiny glossy lipstick on you know and whatever and they're giving you the news yeah um 
stay away from that. Be careful what you're looking at on the internet because pornography is a real big problem. And singing hymns uh, when you start to lust will knock, knock the lust down very quickly. Um, that's my advice on that. Um, Okay, oh, question. Question, you once said you were working on a natural way to heal your eyesight. I would be interested in that study if you had time. Um, oh boy, there's a book I have, there's, um, I can never remember that guy's name. I always think um, John Bergman, um, Dr. John Bergman out in California, he's a chiropractor, natural health type of guy. I don't recommend him totally because he's he has a very foul mouth. But he had two guys working with him at one point in time. Dr. Mike Vander Sheldon, he had some good stuff. And then there's the other guy. And I can never remember that guy's name. I don't know why I can't remember it. Um, but he wrote a book on the thing of restoring your eyesight naturally. Um, there are, it is a nutritional thing, certainly. But then there's also eye exercises that you can do. And um, no, that's not it. Um, and so there's, it's, it's mostly just a thing of, um, you know, I don't wear my glasses very much when I'm reading and things. Um, it's, it's a process. Um, I'm not really doing all that great at it because I work on computers. So, you know, screens are not really the best for your eyesight. Um, okay. Question, is it a sin for a woman to have a job but work from home and get paid? If you're working at home, you can be a Proverbs 31 woman and work at home. No sin at all. Um, read Proverbs 31, and uh, she's working willingly with her hands, and she's selling what she makes. So absolutely not. There's no problem with that. Um, <coughs> have you seen Brad from Carolina's video about you saying David Wood is a Jesuit? Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, David Wood is, is uh, on YouTube here. He is, you know, has a PhD from a Jesuit school. So uh, that makes him a Jesuit, um, according to them, according to the Jesuit standards. Uh, I've showed that before, I think, in some of my studies. So, um, okay. Hi, Brian. I'm 24 going on 25 and unvaxxed. Here's my questions. What should I do? New York City mandate is in place. I'm not allowed to show up at Amazon. Where should I move to? Uh, Thomas. Uh, people are going to have to get very creative as time goes by. Um, you know, that that's a hard question. Um, I honestly think that they're going to be dropping this whole thing very soon um, because we're getting to a point of war and war is really the one where they can depopulate much quicker and there's a lot more money to be made in war um and so i would say uh what would i do if i was a young man in your situation um i would really pray about it you know it's something that you're just going to have to pray about and ask what the lord's leading is on that if you're saved i'm assuming that you're saved um you know, you, you know, you can check out the whole thing of living in a van, you know, um, being mobile, getting around, doing odd jobs here and there, whatever else. Um, be somewhat nomadic. Uh, maybe travel to a state where there are not, you know, there's no mandates and whatever else. Get a different job there. Um, I mean, I've, I literally heard of a young woman that wanted to move to Alaska and she literally took all the money that she had in her backpack and a tent and literally went to Alaska in the summer and said, I want to work at this lodge here or whatever. I'll, I'll clean dishes if I have to, whatever. And, you know, please give me a job and I'll work as hard as I can. And they gave her a job and they said, where are you staying? And she said, well, if it's okay. I'll just pitch my tent out back. And, you know, she saved up and got money and, and actually went from the tent to, 
a small apartment and you know you work your way up i knew a guy the one time that um uh he moved to new york state and all he had uh he was working at a fast food restaurant and all he had was a bicycle and he would ride from this little apartment that he had on bicycle he'd ride miles away to work at the fast food place till he had enough money to and get another job and work his way up um you know it can be done please don't be discouraged on that um What's the real beef between you and Breaker? Same knowledge, similar messages. Uh, what the world, man. Hate seeing Christians mad at each other. Well, Robert Breaker is not a Christian. He is a Gnostic. Okay, that's a very important distinction I need to make there. Robert Breaker is a Gnostic. He believes that salvation is up here. There's no asking God. There's no communication with God. You just increase in knowledge up here to convince yourself that you're saved. Robert Breaker has no problem lying. Um, again, uh, I have a video on my channel about that where he openly says, you know, the, some people say that no man can know the day or the hour. I do not agree. Well, Jesus is the one that said that you know, no man knoweth the day or the hour. So Robert Breaker called Jesus a liar. I take issue with that. That's not the words of a saved man. Okay, Robert Breaker, I showed the proof that he sent an email, which was forwarded to me, where he admits that people are inflating the numbers. Okay, that's lying. You're lying if you're artificially inflating the numbers of subscribers that you have through artificial intelligence bots that you can purchase. Talked about by Jaron Lanning or the book I shared earlier. So uh, he's not the same as me. Okay, the, the reason that he has some similar stuff is, first of all, um, you go back in time, you look at, you know, I was doing videos outside, outdoor sermons before most people were. Robert Breaker copied that. Um, he copies some of my stuff, I've been told. Um, and he also co copies Peter Ruckman, which I learned a lot of things from Peter Ruckman. So, uh, no, we're not the same. Uh, um, Chantre has here, remember to add question. Put the word question, especially all in capital letters is, is good. Before asking one, it's easier for him to catch it. Yes. Um, Uh, thoughts on Joe Schimmel of Good Fight Ministries? Is he good to watch? No, he's a post tripper. Uh, work salvation? No. Oh, great. Um, how do you teach your son the things he needs to know? Because I just had a baby back in August. Well, congratulations, praise the Lord. Did the whole home home birth based on your video when your son was born? Well, praise the Lord. I've had quite a few people actually have home births uh, based on what we said in our video. So that's great to hear. How do we teach a uh, little boy here? Um, we started reading to him at a very young age, uh, some of the classical children type books and whatever else, um, as well as the Bible, um, you know, Good Night Moon, little books like that, um, that are just, you know, uh, the animals of Farmer Jones, you know, um, some of those books. And so we've been reading to him for a long time and we take him places and we teach him things show hey, hey look over there look at that guy there's a drunk walking over there you know and show him stuff there's people are on drugs um you know we selectively after he was um not for the first two years we did not show him any videos for that first little bit of time but after he got old enough or you know we selectively pick certain videos to show him um but uh, we're going through a lot of training right now with reading and writing and you know arithmetic and everything else so and, and there's no off time for homeschooling for us he doesn't get the summers off or anything like that we just teach him year round um, because it's fun to learn the truth um question any hope for me finding a good woman again and get married for the last time oh uh, well uh you're going to have a hard time of it because you don't want to find one that has the uh inoculation because um there's a lot of people that are saying about the shedding of spike proteins and whatever else uh, it's a problem so something you really need to pray about it um question we live in lithuania we are thinking about having a little one but the main issue is about registering the baby how we can avoid it simple don't do it you don't need to um 
you know, you just uh, you have the child at home without any without any assistance. Write the the name and time down of their birth, and um, you know whatever else you want to write, and that's all you need to do. It's between you and the Lord. Um, you know, later on in life, if they want to be registered or whatever else, get a social security number or whatever, well, that's up to them at that point in time. Um, uh, should I go to aviation college to learn to fly planes? Is it a sin? I graduate high school in June. Um, well, again, anything going forward, you you have to ask the question, you know, do you have to have the inoculation in order to go and do it? Um, so. Okay, I'll just answer that one quick. Uh, why do you think David Wood is a Jesuit? Uh, check into it. His education, he got a PhD from a Jesuit university. And um, let me read the thing here from Jesuit Provincials. I uh, can't tell you what. Let me get this thing back up here again. Um, I'll just show this because I, I need to show it. Um, it's been a while since I've done this. Share screen. This one here I'll share. Okay, hopefully you can see this. Let me zoom in on a little bit here. Okay. Up. Oh, I went to the wrong one there. Give me a minute. <laughs> okay. Um, right here it says, uh, the word companions carries a special meaning for Jesuits. When founding our order, St. Ignatius or Ignatius would be the proper way to say it in the Spanish language, wanted his group to be known as the Company of Jesus, synonymous with Society of Jesus. The root of company refers to people who share bread, an ancient symbol of life, mission, and community. And so our company extends beyond Jesuits and leaders of, Jesuits, of, of Jesuit works to include students and alumni, parishioners, and retreatants. Those who are fed by Ignatian spirituality and who help heal a world in need. Um, okay, so right there you have it. This is uh, the Jesuits, um, two of the uh, provincials right down here, SJ, full SJ priests. And they say plainly that if you go to a you know Jesuit school, be it Georgetown or Fordham or Santa Clara or any of them, that you are included in the Jesuit family so there you go um david wood went to a jesuit school therefore david wood is qualified to be a jesuit um how do you handle mockers of the bible in the workplace is silence a sin when do we speak up as bible believing christians um well pray about it um, the Bible talks about out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So hide God's word in your heart. Um, you know, do your very best to uh, just read your Bible and live for the Lord and say, okay, Lord, I don't want to do this in my flesh. These people are trying to tick me off. They know I'm saved or whatever. And, and they're just, they're trying to make me angry. So give me an opportunity, Lord. And, um, I'll tell you what, with some of the bad times that are coming, I think there's going to be a lot more opportunities to speak to people about the Word of God. Um, so rely on the Lord to open up those doors of opportunity. Uh, what are your thoughts about celebrating Easter? I always thought it was celebrating the resurrection, but I've heard that it has pagan roots. Well, again, um, on the issue of holidays, uh, I need to say this. You know, Romans chapter 14, verses 5 through 6 is very plain. One man esteems one day above another. Another man esteems it every day alike. And it says, let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. If you can celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ, then celebrate that. Easter uh, comes from the old pagan Astarte and, and all this other stuff. And there's it's a pagan fertility time and whatever. Well, okay, get the bunnies and the eggs and the, all the other stuff out. I mean, don't rot your children's teeth with a bunch of junk candy. You know, it's not really all that good for them. I certainly got a lot of it, you know, a box of, you know, tooth decay <laughs> or a, a basket of tooth decay, you know, growing up. 
jelly beans and chocolate bunnies and marshmallow peeps and all the other stuff, but not necessary. Um, so watch out for the whole, you know, holidays are pagan and things. Uh, you can serve the Lord in times like that and, and whatever else and make it about Jesus Christ, about remembering his resurrection. Christmas is another one. People say it's pagan and satanic and all this other stuff. Uh, okay. Saturnalia would have been practiced in the first century. And yet when they meet in Acts chapter 15, the, they have a council there. What should the, their, the Jews, the Jewish apostles, and they're saying, what are we supposed to say to the Gentiles? Not one word about forsaking holidays. So, Stay away from idols and fornication and things strangled and from blood. That's all it was. So that hopefully answers your question. Um, I do Instacart and DoorDash as a means of income. It's money I can earn anywhere. Should I leave New York State now? I would say uh, New York State's really going, you know, weird there's been a lot of weird stuff with new york state i've heard um, especially I'm, I'm actually hearing that there's some legislation coming up in january no, this month just starting here about new york state um i actually uh, we had a place in eldred pennsylvania that um, was right on the state line it was an old place and um if you looked at it from google uh, earth the state line between New York and Pennsylvania was literally running through the house. So, you know, we'd go out to the kitchen or to the laundry room and in the back part of the house and we were in New York and we'd go to the bed and to the bathroom and we're in Pennsylvania. So it's kind of an odd place. So I do have a little bit of experience with New York state, state, not city. I've never been in New York city. Um, okay. Come on. All right. And by the way, the, the thing of Easter being mentioned in the Bible, I should say this. It's in the book of Acts. Um, it's just kind of given as a, you know, Herod intending after Easter was going to bring uh, Peter forth and put him to death. Um, and uh, it's not any kind of a Herod after the evil holiday of Easter or something like this. Again, you know, I don't waste any time on Easter because there's not really any point to it, you know. For us and i know there are people that don't waste any time on christmas because there's no point to them on that i personally you know celebrate christmas no santa claus or anything like that i don't you know who cares about that guy it's not logical you know this thing of you know i always joke about it i point over to our stove pipe coming down our six inch stove pipe and i always say to my son i said you better be good because santa claus is going, going to come down that pipe tonight <laughs> and he, you know he just looks in kind of you know, right that's stupid doesn't make sense yeah, can't can't fit down through there. Um, okay. Question, brother Brian, should a saved man or woman feel guilty about not wanting to have fellowship with a lost family member who has been vaccinated? Um, it hurts. I'm not going to lie and say you know that uh, uh, you know oh, I don't even it doesn't even bother me or whatever else. It it does hurt, and um, but as far as feeling guilty where you have to compromise, that's a different story. Um, in that case, no, um, you know, I mean, they're experimental, um, uh, gene therapy, their own words, you know, and, <clears throat> um, just this whole thing's been so ridiculous. So, um, no, you shouldn't feel guilty if you can't fellowship with them. Um, I have relatives myself that are vaccinated and goodbye it's as simple as that okay just skin of the <clears throat> Ryan, um, can you explain how rapture is related to first and second resurrection? Well, the first resurrection is given in the book of Revelation chapter 20, and it's talking about the first resurrection has three parts to it. There's the Old Testament saints that came up with Jesus when he rose from the dead. Um, 
uh, after his crucifixion. There's those. They can go back in the ground. You can read about them in Matthew chapter 27 and 28, I think it is. Read through what happened after he died on the cross. The Old Testament saints, you know, many of the saints which slept arose and were seen of people, you know. So there's that. And then there's the body of Christ. And then there's um, those who die in the time of Jacob's trouble into the millennial kingdom, I believe. And at the end of the millennial kingdom, the thousand year reign of Jesus Christ, it says, this is the first resurrection. So the first resurrection is for the saved. The second resurrection is for the lost. The lost that right now are in hell, those lost people are going to be resurrected for the great white throne judgment, Revelation chapter 20. So there's two different resurrections. It's not two different parts of, you know, one resurrection. No, it's resurrection of the saved is the first resurrection. Resurrection of the lost is the second resurrection. Um, where, you know, the saved go to eternal life. The damned in hell are resurrected to be judged at the great white throne, to get their final judgment, and then they are, you know, going to be damned to the lake of fire for all of eternity. They're resurrected to be given a new body that will last forever in the lake of fire. Um, that's the difference. <clears throat> Is MIT College, uh, Cambridge, Massachusetts, a Jesuit college? Um, my old charismatic devil pastor went there and he even has a 201 address for his Babel building. No, it's not a Jesuit school openly, but, you know, there's, I'm sure, a lot of Jesuit-minded people there. <laughs> um, is that the John MacArthur commentary behind you? Yes, it is. I have all of the John MacArthur commentaries back here or whatever else. Um, if so, what do you think of them as a study tool? Absolutely terrible. They were sent to me by a brother that came to his senses and got away from John MacArthur. John MacArthur is not a Bible believer. He is a man that uh, uses the Bible to get rich. And that's just the plain and simple truth of it. Um, I've had people send me so much information, and I, I'm thankful for that. It's wonderful. Um, this whole bookshelf back here is almost all a brother sent me to all of this whole thing, just boxes and boxes of books. And it's nice because I can look up comments or people say, did you know John MacArthur teaches this or this guy teaches that? I go look it up. So uh, we don't reject books. Um, we appreciate them. Um, but John MacArthur, um, somebody sent me this thing the one time that there was actually a guy out at his school that was saying, John MacArthur hasn't even written any books. You know, I wrote the books and he, basically took my work and put it out as his own. Um, man's a crook. Uh, <clears throat> Why is it that lost people, false converts, sometimes have decent testimonies? This has been quite disturbing to me as someone close to me has a good testimony but defends sin. I don't understand. Um, well, there are people that do have good testimonies, and some of them, you know, are saved, I will say, if they have the right testimony and if there's the right fruit that they're bearing in their life and everything. Um, <clears throat> but you can get out of fellowship with the Lord and uh, you can start to mess around and sin. But then the question comes up, is there chastening? Is God doing things in their life to correct them and try to turn them back? Um, if there's no chastening, then no, it didn't take. Okay, that's the way you get that through that one. Um, okay, did you ever see the video of Patriot Front marching in the Lincoln Capitol? I think you can see that white nationalism is really rising. Bible prophecy being fulfilled. Patriot Front, I don't, I honestly know. I haven't, are, are you talking Lincoln, Nebraska, maybe? Lincoln Capitol? I don't know. But, um, but yeah. White nationalism is going to rise. Uh, there's a lot of white people out there that have been um, really knocked around and things, and uh, we're supposed to be um, embarrassed about our heritage and whatever else. I'm not embarrassed by my heritage, not at all. And um, you know, I can feel my anger rising about certain things. And you have to be careful not to get drawn into stuff. You know, Donald Trump said a lot of really good stuff. But the man was just yoked up with so many bad organizations and everything else. And then he, you know, comes out and says other stuff. And he's just like, man, that guy is wicked. 
But boy, he says some good stuff in his speeches. You know, Hitler did too. <clears throat> Question, can you please pray for my wife and I? We have our second baby due on January 9th. It will be our second home birth. Well, praise the Lord. And so yeah, we'll pray for you. That's great. Um, uh, question. I just learned I need to say question first. So this is a repeat from above. I love your videos. I've learned a lot as I grow. I am finding it hard to love people. Uh, yeah. Um, there's a lot of really wicked people out there. And uh, it is very difficult to have love for a lot of people out there. Um, it's just something that you have to pray about. Uh, okay, I'm just I'm looking at other things here, but I I want to answer your question a little bit better than that. Um, in terms of loving people, understand that the love of a Christian towards the lost. Okay, we love them in the sense that we want to see them get saved. Anybody, I mean, I've said that there. I mean, there are people that I I hate them with perfect hatred, you know, because of what they've done, because of what they're part of. But if they come to a point of repentance, and they come and they show up. Black Pope drive up here, pull in the lane, come walking up in tears and say, I need to be saved. I know it's going to get me killed, but I don't care. I need to be saved. I need to ask your forgiveness. You know, we've been directing things towards you and what, whatever. Praise the Lord. Pope Francis, walk up here. Anyway, name the most evil person. I look at them and I say, okay, I hate what you are. I hate what you're doing. You know, and you deserve hell. Your damnation is just, you evil, wicked servant of the devil. But if you want to get saved, genuinely born again, then my love will be manifest towards you. Okay? So you go out in, into the world, and you see these wicked people, and it's just sort of a, oh, Lord, these people are vexing me so much and whatever else. But always keep it in your mind. The Lord could have any one of those people and could put you into that situation where your paths cross, and they say, I just don't understand what's going on in the world. And the Lord gives you a little poke, you know, speak. <laughs> and you start to witness to them, and you can be the one that leads them to Jesus Christ. So outwardly, we hate what they are. We hate what they're doing. We can look and say, you know, well, that, your damnation is just. But always be open for the Lord there to kind of flip the little switch on where you say, okay, I love you. I want to tell you the truth now. I can say it that way. Okay. If you get a house on property, will you still be off grid? Um, that's a big debate that we have right now. Um, the off grid thing is great, but uh, if I was just, if all I had to do was just survive, you know, if there's some kind of a nuclear war here in this year or something and it takes out all the major cities and they're, all the power grids just gone out of America, and, you know, all it is is just survival. Um, what we've learned about being off grid, uh, we're not experts by any means, but I get along. I think I could get along. You know, it, the Lord's given me a lot of talents and skills in that area. And, um, I'm thankful for that. Uh, it would be a different life. Let me just say it that way. Doing firewood completely with axes and, you know, crosscut saws and whatever else, which I have, uh, I can do it that way. I can, I have just to experiment with it, but it would take a long time. <laughs> I would need a lot of protein to be able to, you know, keep my energy up and things. Um, you know, a lot of, I get irritated with these people, off-grid channels and things. There's some good ones on YouTube, but a lot of them, it's just all, you know, they, they took the off-grid thing and they turned it into all this wacky nonsense, you know, running dishwashers, you know, with solar power or something. What? You know, Hey, I'm off grid, you know, I just have this, you know, huge, big property and, and gigantic house and everything else. And, you know, $200,000 worth of solar or something. And, you know, and then you get the off grid channels that, you know, their wife's uh, running around skimpy clothes and, oh, hey, look at all the views and whatever. Else. So, uh, uh, would I build a place off grid, on grid? Well, electric is just down the road, not even a 
you know, maybe uh, my neighbor's property is maybe 200 yards away, electric, to where our lane goes back on our land. So it probably wouldn't be a big deal. And that is something that we're considering. Um, I don't know. That's something we're praying about right now. Uh, okay. Um, what's your understanding of long fast three to five or so days for health, etc.? Should we get blood tested and such before? Um, I'm not really into the blood testing thing, to be honest with you. Um, three to five days, well, uh, for health. Um, I think intermittent fasting is better. Um, you know, I don't know. That's something I'm not really all that great at, to be honest with you, on the thing of longer fasting. Uh, uh, longer fasting, in my opinion, is more for there's a major issue. You need to get answers to prayer, and you just pray and fast for a few days. Um, that's how I would answer that. Question, what are your overall thoughts on the book of Jeremiah? How many times I... Or many times I feel like Jeremiah in these times alone and in amazement that others are so blinded to what's going on. Jeremiah is a wonderfully relevant book. You are definitely on the, on the, uh, on the right track. Yes. Uh, anybody out there, you want to see how God judges a nation, how God brings a nation down, look at the book of Jeremiah. Okay. And then go into Lamentations if you really want to see how things progress and get worse. Um, question, how do you handle mockers in the Bible, uh, in the uh, workplace? I already answered that question. Um, uh, question, if you haven't already mentioned this, what do you think of the Maxwell trial? Is it just a show? Um, is that the uh, girlfriend to uh, Epstein or something, I think? Um, Nothing's going to come of that. They protect the uh, the high-level pedophiles. They don't ever go in a, you know, to prison or anything like that unless they're dying of cancer or something. Um, okay, question. Why don't you repent of putting up trees as idolatry? Um, because an idol is something that you worship above and beyond God. Um, I don't worship a tree. Okay. And show me anywhere in the scriptures where a Christmas tree is an idol. Okay, and if you want to run to Jeremiah chapter 10, I'd like to point out the fact that it's a idol that is decked with gold and silver. In other words, covered with gold and silver. If you're trying to make out a Christmas tree, then you had to have to prove that they had, you know, gold and silver garland and tinsel in, you know, BC years. You know, yeah. You know, see how that goes for you. Um so an idol is something that you're putting up. I mean, by your standard, then, I guess I should cut down all the pine trees and, and you know, spruce and fir trees on my property because, you know, they could be mistaken for Christmas trees. Please study the issue more. You've been lied to. Um, okay. Uh, question, Brian, I'm the breadwinner since my husband is disabled, but he's our leader of the family and I follow. Is that wrong? Well, I don't know the exact, exact situation. I don't want to get caught up in some kind of a thing here. Well, he said to her that, you know, she can work outside the home. I don't know your situation. If your husband is genuinely disabled and there's no other chance or no other choice and whatever else, well, um, try to work from the home. If at all possible, stay out of the workforce. Proverbs 31, women you know, the uh, very godly woman working with her hands and selling it in the market. There's no problem with that. Um, what do you think of study Bibles? Which, which do you recommend? I have a Schofield one. Um, I did a video on the best KJV study Bibles. You can watch that video. Question. Have you read the book Fourth Turning? The Lord told me to read it. Your thoughts? No, I have no idea what that is. Um, have you read the prophecy of Emmanuel Minus, Minus from 1968 from a 90-year-old woman from Norway? Aldrace? No, I have not. 
Um, question, what books do you recommend for home birthing? My wife's health is not great, and we're curious what all we can do to help her and baby. Um, the uh, there's a uh, there's a channel um, there's a couple in Sweden they had a home birth uh, Talis Boone or something like that um, but they, they did a video where they were showing a lot of good books on home birthing and, and whatever Matthias and Tova is their, their names and uh, they're over there in Sweden they have an off-grid place um, and they did a whole thing on uh, Weston A. Price has some good books on the thing of, you know, nutritional health for the mother, which makes a very healthy baby and, and makes the um, birthing process very easy or easier, I'll say it that way. Um, so uh, Weston, but what, look up Weston A. Price. Um, you know, those are going to be probably the best books on the issue of, you know, the proper diet for a mother. To give her get her body healthy and also the baby um so that's good uh, question is joel richardson okay to watch um i would say no to that um his book the islamic antichrist is recommended by the jesuit and he has it on his actual website you know endorsements and things one was a jesuit <laughs> not really that good um not to mention the fact that to say that the antichrist is going to be islamic is stupid nonsense um you know islam yeah it's big yes there's some power there but not anywhere close to the catholics and all their knighthoods and everything else not anywhere close so um i don't recommend joel richardson for that reason uh Question, what was the video where you talked about your move to Maine, trying to move, but having issues with housing? Oh, boy. It's been interspersed with a lot of different videos. Um, I don't know what that would have been, uh, you know, if I would have covered that in great detail. Um, question. Um, what do you think about Pastor Gene Kim? Is he a true man of God? It really seems like he has good understanding of Scripture. Well, Gene Kim is very much like Robert Breaker. They both go through Ruckman's school. Peter Ruckman put out all this information. I have a lot of it myself. I have all of his commentaries up here. A whole lot of these books right here, these are all Ruckman books. Lots of his videos. We've been watching his chalk talks. My son and I am trying to get that for, get some quotes, quotes from him for a future upcoming project. But the problem is Ruckman, um, you can study his material and then come out and look like some kind of superhero with the Bible. And uh, there's a lot of guys, I've known a lot of guys from PBI, um, both in person and online. And um, there's some good guys and there's some really bad guys that have come out of PBI. Um, Pensacola Bible Institute, a church that, that the Bible Baptist Church in Pensacola, Florida, they you know, founded that. Um, my issues with Gene Kim is he's a hypocrite he can come out and he can speak against roman catholicism and yet he runs his church from a catholic building so he's paying rent to the catholic church it's kind of weird and he covers that up you know um and he's got you know san jose bible baptist church but it's in santa clara you know right down the street from you know i mean i think it's four blocks away or something from santa clara university you know probably the biggest jesuit school on the west coast Kind of weird and uh listening to his testimony i had grace for the guy because i you know he says you know pbi and uc berkeley and berkeley is a very evil school i mean the, the parties and things i've heard of from different people that went there pretty bad stuff goes on and you have gene kim and you know he's uh bragging about going to berkeley as a quote saved man and i'm thinking huh you know some of his followers wrote me because i brought that up in one of my videos and they they wrote me and they said we did that to witness to people. Okay. So you just go and you, you go to a lost university to witness to people. There's a big problem with that. Um, okay. Question. Revelation 14 verses 9 through 11. 
you have always said it refers to hell, lake of fire, but it says in the presence of all the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb, that it can't be at the heart of the earth. Um, okay. Uh, well, as far as lake of fire, I don't think that lake of fire is going to be, you know, understand that there's there's a difference between hell and lake of fire. Um, but in the presence of, you know, the angels in terms of, you know, that they're able to see it or whatever else, well, you're dealing with eternity there, dealing with heaven. Um, Paul wrote in, in uh, I can't think of the verse right now, but uh, he wrote, he says, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. And, you know, so we can't really judge that in terms of, well, if you're in heaven, you certainly wouldn't be able to see down into the heart of the earth. Well, I don't know. I don't know the how everything all works out there. I have no idea. Um, I just take scripture for what it says. So, but the lake of fire is not going to be in the heart of the earth. Uh, just to say that, just to correct that, if I've said that, then I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. Um, <clears throat> question about to propose to a woman, any last things I should consider before I make this big next big step? Well, you know, make sure she's saved, make sure you're saved. Uh, there's a whole lot of things that you need to consider before you ask a woman to marry you. Um, so, uh, question: Is God okay and willing to allow a saved man to find to find a good woman after both parties have been divorced? Well, that depends on the conditions of your divorce. I have a whole study on the thing of marriage, divorce, and remarriage, so you can watch that. Um, question. Do you think Trump may have turned on his Jesuit origins? Not for one second. If Trump, if Trump turned on his Jesuit origins, they would destroy him financially. So no, he has not turned on his Jesuit uh, foundation. I mean, he had Fauci the whole time. And they're supposedly fighting and whatever else. I mean, Fauci was such a stinking liar the whole way through the thing. Get rid of him. Just you know, you're done. He didn't. Um, is remarriage okay to do? Uh, in the right context, yes. But again, you know, you need to watch my study on that. Uh, right there's the uh, link. Sister Chantre put that up. Thank you, sister, for doing that. Um, try to get down here, try to catch up a little bit. Question, what are your thoughts on living in a camper? Because it's pretty simple, pretty well impossible to buy a house or property without getting into mortgage. Also thoughts on going to dentist. Um, you know, living in a camper, yeah, in the right climate. Don't try it up here. <laughs> Bad idea. Uh, there are people that do. There are people that do. You have to put skirting around the bottom of it and everything. And if you get a, can get a wood stove in the thing and and whatever else. We had a camper at one of our, at our property in Littleton. It was a fifth wheel camper, 27 foot older one and whatever else and and uh, we had a little wood stove in it and um it stayed okay but you know the problem is you can get it up to 70 or so degrees um but you go to sleep and you know in about an hour or two it's just whoo, it goes the temperature and so it gets rather cold so you're tending a fire all night if you have a lot of firewood you can do it but um if you're going to live in a camper you know you can always migrate down south be a snowbird as we like to call them around here you go down south for the winter and you come back up north for the summer. So, um, question: What are your thoughts on wedding wedding rings? Also, enjoyed your Bible lesson on marriage coverture. Again, you know, wedding rings are they in the Bible? No. Are they condemned by the Bible? No. So. You know, if you want to wear one, okay, fine. There's times I do, there's times I don't. You know, whatever. I don't have one on right now. Um, question. I'm going military a few weeks later. Since it is mandate in South Korea, vaccine is not a mandate, but there is peer pressure. Is it a sin to be in the military? I do not want to be a terror to the good. Um, I don't know about the South Korean military, but 
I would say probably that's not much different than the American military. And I would say yes, very much. It's a sin to be in the military anymore. Um, I have a study on that. You can watch that if you want to. Um, question. My staff, Helen Cloud is an atheist and a hardcore one for that. How do I win her soul to Christ so she doesn't go to hell? Um, well, it's going to be uh, just having... What you have to do is you have to divorce yourself from the church building Christians and just simply say, that's not me. You see the Catholic Church, you know, the priests molesting children and whatever else, that's not who I am. Please understand, let me, can I just show you from the Bible what I believe? I'm not trying to get you converted or anything else. I'm just trying to show you how different what I am is from what you perceive to be Christian. And that a lot of times opens up their eyes and they think, oh, you know, I didn't know that. Um, okay, let me get down through here. Question, is it wrong to come sharp with a sword at those who are not dispensational? Um, well, I like sharp, sharp swords. So, <laughs> uh, But no, um, non-dispensational people, you just have to kind of get to them and say, okay, Ease them into it. Hebrews chapter 9. Go to that. You know, Testament of so forth. Force after men are dead. Show them those scriptures and say, okay, when did the, when did the New Testament begin? Is it Mark, or uh, Matthew chapter 1 or after Jesus died on the cross? It's after Jesus died on the cross. And they, you can't really reject that and say, oh, no, I don't agree. No, it's right there. Plainly spelled out. And then show them 2 Timothy 2.15. Start to explain to them why there's proper divisions. But also... Um, first Timothy, no, second Timothy 3 16 about you know all scriptures given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness. So it's not that we ignore parts of the Bible, you just have to rightly divide it. But you have to ease people into that stuff, make sure that they're saved first, or else it won't make sense. Um, question. Will there ever be a time when my mind changes? I'm always battling with blaspheming thoughts and wicked imaginations. Will it never, will it ever end? Uh, that's a rough one. Okay. Um, Romans chapter seven kind of addresses that whole thing. Um, you know, you will, there's two different laws there. The law of your mind, the law of your flesh, and the law of the Lord, which is perfect, converting the soul. and you know, your, you know, the law of sin and death being what you struggle with your flesh and everything else. Um, God's word is perfect. His law is perfect. So the way to get around that is to, you know, just become obsessed with scripture and do your best to sing hymns and spiritual songs and everything else. Um, but in terms of getting away from any kind of blasphemous thoughts or horrible dreams or whatever else, no. Um, unfortunately, uh, I'm not going to lie to you and say, oh, it comes in time. It'll, it'll be fine. You know, I have dreams sometimes that if it ever came out as a movie, some of the dreams I've had, um, and I was the producer, I'd probably go to jail. I mean, it's terrible. And I wake up and I think, where did that come from? What in the world was that? And just, Lord, I'm sorry. And I've had dreams that I'm, I mean, it takes a day or two to get over the dream. It's so bad. Um, so don't think that you can you know, get to a point where you're just not going to have that. Um, it's just a part of being here on this earth is, uh, it's a battle. It's war. War is the single greatest uh, reality of this life. There's the war on the flesh. There's the war you know, on the devil and on his people. And you know, just the, the lusts of other things and, and the world, and you're just fighting all the time down here. And what happens is people try to get into this sort of a happy land where you don't get attacked or something, and that's not reality. So you might as well just learn to fight. And when you get hit, when you get knocked down, get back up. Fight. Okay? It's important. Um, question. How can you defend the doctrine of sola scriptura when that doctrine is nowhere in the King James Version? Um, by name, no, but certainly 
sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. Uh, no, it would be sanctify them through thy truth, thy word and tradition is truth. Thy word and church, cultural, community, no, it's thy word is truth. Uh, now, you can say, well, that doesn't say sola scriptura, but, you know, come on here. Let's not strain at gnats, okay? Um, yes, of course, God's word is our final authority. Um, and I could go through a whole lot of other scriptures. Again, I have a study on that. Um, the scriptures alone versus papal traditions, I think is what it's called. Uh, question. What are your thoughts on multi-day fast for health, weight loss, eye health, etc.? Should we get blood tests before doing long fast? I think you asked this already. Um, look into it yourself. You know, I'm, I just haven't studied it enough to really give you a good answer on that. Is what I'm saying. <clears throat> Okay, if I can get down here, just kind of. <clears throat> Question, are Vax people saved or can they be saved? Um, if somebody gets the, the shot, uh, they need to really call out to the Lord and and. Um, there's some real problems there because you're not who God created you to be anymore because your your genetic code has been changed, altered. Um, I'm not going to get into that whole thing in this uh, video. I've expressed my opinions about that before. Um, How do I get my baby to start on finger foods? She only wants baby puree foods. Having a hard time getting her to switch over. I know this isn't a Bible question. Well, babies have a little funny thing about them that they feel sometimes if they're being left out or whatever else. So there's daddy and mommy are eating something and, and it's kind of, mm, and you, oh, no. Oh, you know, you eat it yourself and you can play little games with them and, and things. And all of a sudden they're, oh, I want one. I want one. You know, you have to think like a child sometimes in order to be a good parent. <laughs> <laughs> you be quiet over there. Um, so, yeah. Okay, come on. I can't tell you how many lines I've memorized from children's books. You know, we like vintage children's books, and uh, we read a lot of them and, and whatever else. And the, the house that Jack built, and, and uh, you know, Petunia, Beware, and you know, a lot of these old books and things. We love those. So, uh, John MacArthur teaches tongues. I guess speaking in tongues is the unforgivable sin. What are your thoughts? No, it isn't. <laughs> um, uh, you know, speaking in tongues is a is there for today. Okay, First Corinthians twelve through fourteen, um, divers kinds of tongues are there. Now, when you get into the book of Corinthians, it's talking about a gift of being able to speak languages, tongues or languages. Okay, it's not some kind of a Holy Spirit thing of just all of a sudden boom manifesting like what happens in the book of Acts chapter two. But there are some people, brethren, in the body of Christ that can learn languages just like that. Me, I have a terrible time of it. So I don't have the, the gift of tongues, okay, gift of languages. Um, so to say that, you know, speaking in tongues is the unforgivable sin, I, I can understand the, the theological way that you do that because it's somebody that's faking the Holy Ghost, so therefore you're speaking against the Holy Ghost and whatever else. Nonsense. The only time that you can do that, commit the unpardonable sin is when Jesus Christ is physically on the earth because you're looking at God manifest in the flesh and the Holy Spirit is 100% in him. Okay, there's no, oh, it's my flesh speaking this time and it's not the Holy Spirit or whatever. You're dealing with God. So that's the only time you can commit the unpardonable sin. Um, John MacArthur's a, an idiot, quite frankly. Um, <coughs> Okay.
Question, do you think Calvinists are saved? Um, I think that there have been cave, caved Salvinists. No, saved Calvinists. Yes, I do think that some are saved. The problem is when you get into the deeper levels of the five-point tulip Calvin, Calvinism, the hyper-Calvinist movement, you're starting to get into this thing of, you know, I have to repent of all my sins, and then God eventually re grants me repentance, and then I'm, you know, now I'm saved, I think. And, you know, it gets really philosophical. So, um, you know, there are people that, that genuinely get saved, and they get spoiled by philosophy down the road. Um, but you'll see chastening in their life. Again, understand what true biblical salvation is. True biblical salvation is you're a wreck. You get saved. God, please save me. You, you call out to the Lord to be saved. You believe the gospel. You believe what the Bible says. Put your faith in Jesus Christ 100%. There's no more self-righteousness. You aren't looking at yourself and saying, well, I'm a good person and I can be saved. No, no. You get genuinely saved. The Lord will start to clean up your life through the process of sanctification. During that process, you can get knocked off course by philosophies of men, Calvinism being one of them. I mean, the fact that it's called Calvinism, John Calvin, you know, it's kind of a little red flag there. You know, uh, don't ever be involved in Denningerism or I'm a, I'm a follower of the Apostle Brian or something. Of, you know, no, um, you shouldn't be following anything that's named after a man. Okay, that's dangerous. But you can get messed up in philosophy and off track in terms of what you believe in the scriptures and you'd still be saved. But if you get messed up like that, then you're going to see chastening in your life. Things are going to start going wrong. OK, it's kind of uh, if the Lord, you know, you're blindfolded, you have something in your eyes, you know, take the Apostle Paul on the road to Damascus and the bright light, you know, he's blinded and everything else. If it was, okay, we'll put you in this carriage here, and the Lord says, I'll put you in a carriage, and I'm going to drive you to Damascus here, you know, and he's going along, and we'll just say Paul's got, got the reins to the horses, and he starts going off to the, you know, side, and he's starting to get off the road, and the Lord says, uh, nudges him, you know, to the left, Paul, you know, like that. Oh, okay, and he gets back to the left, and he's going along fine, and here's a turn coming up, I'll, you know, God's going to direct your path. You see, and if there's no direction and you see somebody that's said, I'm saved, they get messed up in philosophy and then they make a total, they, they just go on with that and they're just becoming this hyper Calvinist now and whatever else. And there's no correction. There's no guidance from God. They're not saved. Okay. It's kind of a weird analogy, but hopefully you understand what I mean there. Um I cannot get down to the bottom of this thing here. Uh, question. Marriage in new heavens and new earth for those who wanted it but unable to find mates or sacrifice that to focus on the Lord. Will he provide, provide or is it eternally out of reach? I'm anxious. Uh, good question. I really don't know. Um, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. We will be like Jesus Christ. We will be like the angels, you know. So, okay, I'll say it this way. The, Jesus said in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. So, okay. Sorry. I get to this point in time when I've asked to answer so many questions, I start to kind of, my brain starts to <laughs> not function correctly. But no, there will be no marriage in the resurrection, which means into eternity. New heavens and new earth. Um, in that time there, uh, I would say that that's still, you're still in your resurrected body at that time. So I don't think that there will be any marriage in that. And you aren't going to be thinking about it. You aren't going to be, you know, watching me and my wife walk by and we wave and, you know, have you over for supper and you're sitting there, you know, single and miserable or something. No, we're all going to be serving the Lord in our individual roles at that point in time. Uh, question. Do you think Christians can suffer from depression? Absolutely. I saw a video that said that any Christian who has mental illness isn't saved and has demons instead. <laughs> Charismatics are nuts. Um, you know, Paul wrote about, I have continual sorrow, you know, and you read, I mean, read the Bible and you'll see these guys, you know, um, 
Elijah, you know, he wins against the priests of Baal and he's out there, you know, saying, God, take my life from me. You know, and I mean, depression's all through the Bible. Jesus was a man of sorrow, acquainted with grief. So anybody that tells you that depression is some kind of demonic thing, they don't know what they're talking about. Don't ever fall for that. Um, uh, question. Hi, Brian. I sent you a package of printed materials about church organs and video game, etc. a while back. I was wondering if you had a chance to look at them. Yes, I did. Um, the church organ thing was really fascinating. There was a, the church thing about the Jews, I think, as well. And I got into that article, and then it was a whole pile of other stuff came, and it uh, this and that. I have them over in the one room. Um, I just haven't been able to get back to it again. Um, but very good materials. I wish, I really wish that the Trinity three-person thing was true, that we're made after God's image, you know, that I would have three persons, because I could send, you know, my two other guys over there to read stuff. One, you go and you you know change the oil in, in the Jeep and I'm going to be in here on the computer and you number three you go over and read the articles there or something that would be handy but uh, um, yes I did receive them thank you for sending them I will try to get to them uh, okay Herbert Gray do you believe Peter Ruckman is in hell no I don't um, Ruckman is another guy that got spoiled by a lot of different philosophies, Trinitarianism being one of them. Um, he stuck with the church building thing when he shouldn't have. Uh, God showed him plenty of stuff. Ruckman knew in his one book um, on the local church. I have it right here, actually. Right there. The local church by Peter Ruckman. There's his church right there. Bible Baptist Church. Uh, where's the thing at? Um, uh, I'm trying to think of where it is here. He's talking about different things about filing as a nonprofit and whatever else. Um, I thought I had my, my bookmarks here. I thought that they would show that. But he he basically says, when you have a church building, you are anti-New Testament. I did a video on it years ago. Um, but, sorry, I'm trying to think of which book that was in. It might not be in this one. It might be another one. Um, but you can watch my video on it. I showed the proof. But does that mean he's lost? No. I don't believe that many he was lost. Yeah, there was chastening in Ruckman's life. You could see that plainly. Marriage is falling apart. He had a lot of problems down there at his church. So if they're chastening, good, the right testimony. You see the process of sanctification, but then they get messed up with philosophies of the world. And then you see God's chastening in their lives. Things aren't going so good. Okay. I believe he's saved. Um, okay. Back to this question. Do you think we should be stocking up on food and whatnot and seriously prepping? Or should we as believers be doing things differently? Um, prepping is problematic because there's there's not a whole lot of food out there that really preserves well. There are some grains, uh, rice, uh, some you know dried beans, things like that can have a very long shelf life once they're dried um, correctly. But in terms of you know spam in a can or MREs especially, you know. That stuff is so loaded with preservatives. You know, you see these American Patriot type of things here on YouTube, you know, those storage foods and all that stuff. Ugh, that stuff isn't fit to give your dog. I mean, it's it's bad. You have to put a lot of preservatives in it to, you know, make it last for a while. Um, I have no idea how bad things will get before the catching up of the body of Christ in terms of what levels. I know it will be bad, but I don't know how bad. And exactly what sectors and whatever will really suffer or whatever. Will America just be cut off and become a third world country? Uh, civil war, you know, I don't know. Famine is definitely coming. Um, you're, the best thing that you can do is, um, you know, learn to get food in your local area. Find farms that sell food. Support them. Make sure that they're, you know, paid well. 
uh, good grass-fed meats, uh, raw milk if you can get it, um, anything like that. Um, up here in northern Maine, it's a big potato area. You know, get potatoes, uh, vegetables, whatever you can from farm stands. Grow whatever you can is also very important. And, you know, you, you have to realize, too, that uh, there's a big difference between saying that you can, you know, hunt or fish or whatever else and kill an animal. You know, well, I'll do it when I'm hungry enough. Uh, but you have to get good at it. Okay. Um, you shoot your first animal or you, you kill an animal or whatever else, you know, in the wild. Uh, the meat's very healthy. In most cases, it's extremely healthy and much better than anything you'll get in the store. But, you know, you have to get in there and you have to get the guts out and, you know, clean the thing and whatever else. And your hands are going to be nice and bloody. And, you know, sometimes the smells are a little unpleasant, especially if you hit it in the wrong area, <laughs> you know, whatever. But you have to get experience at that stuff. Um, so it's a, it's a subject that I can't answer. Just here's the survival kit. This is what you do. Um, this works for everybody. I can't do that. You're area is going to be different in my area um so uh okay Question, is one this Pentecostal a doctrine that saves or damns? Um, it's the one this Pentecostal movement is basically modalism. It's not a good thing. You're believing a false God. So I would say it, it would damn you to hell. Um, and that's not what I believe, by the way. If anybody's trying to say I'm oneness or something, no, I'm not. Um, question, I believe in the biblical Godhead. Question, will there ever be a time when my mind stops bringing up blasphemous? Okay, we already um answered that one i think um, um brian, brother brian yes it was lincoln nebraska okay sorry about that patriot front is a white nationalist group from texas okay thank you for educating me on that i did not know that um Um, please address Gene Kim. Well, I kind of already have. Um, he's obviously doing what he's doing for views, doing a lot of clickbait and things like that. He's a man pleaser. Um, there's a real problem that I have with that. I know Peter Ruckman said I, I might bring a video out on this eventually, but he did a question and answer thing the one time years ago when he was still alive. And Peter Ruckman, I bring him up because he was the one that taught Gene Kim. And Peter Ruckman said that he tells his young men, don't go out of here and specialize on all the weird, strange stuff, and whatever else. Go out and preach the word and let God expand you and grow you and whatever else um, in terms of your ministry. And uh, Gene Kim hasn't done that. He's relying on the, the ways of, of the world to move his ministry forward. So I have a big problem with that. Oh, uh, wait, I think I missed one up there. Yeah, okay. Question, what are your thoughts on 5G being turned on this week? Anything we can do to stay, stay safe from it, especially for people that live in or near big cities? Um, brethren, it's going to have to get to a point where you just have to leave, get out of the cities. Just have to pray about that and say, I need to get out of here, Lord, please. I, you know, I need to get away. Um, the 5G thing is a really bad deal. <laughs> I mean, 5G is, it's a military, military, or millimeter wave technology. It's a weapon. Oh, but it makes, you know, connection to the internet fast. <laughs> uh, bad idea. Okay, I, I know, I know it's hard to move. It's hard to just pull up all your roots and the money thing and all that, but you have to pray. You need to pray and say, God, I have to get away from this stuff. It's real bad. Um. Question, should Christians eat pork, and what do you think about Seventh-day Adventism? I'm not 
uh, Seventh-day Adventism. Seventh-day Adventism is, is a very satanic system because it was founded by a woman that was nuts in the head, um, vegetarianism and, and everything else there. Um, she was a crazy woman. Um, a lot of weird occult stuff going on there too. Um, they took a lot of good stands early on, but they're seventh day Adventism, and you need to stay away from that stuff. They twist the scriptures like crazy. Um, as far as eating pork is concerned, um, if it's not culture specific to you, then no, I would say don't waste your time with it. If you you get a Jew or something like that, that could, that could say, well, it's not really part of your ancestry. You don't bother eating it, whatever else. It's up to you. Um, but the Bible plainly teaches that every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. I think it's First Timothy chapter 4 or Second Timothy chapter 4. Got the first and second mixed up here. But yeah, you can eat pork if you want to. Not a big deal. But, um, you know, I, I'm very much into the thing of your, um, you know, things that really work out good for your, you know, your kindred, your your people, your ethnicity. I don't want to use the term race because it's not a Bible term. So, okay. Question, what differences have you seen in saved couples who went through a marriage coverture and those that didn't? Your thoughts on wedding rings? Uh, people that go with state marriage licenses will typically have a lot of problems in their marriage. And especially with the raising of children, they're saying, I don't know what we should do, Brother Ryan. We're, you know, we have to send our children to public school. We're, we're required to, and we have to, we want to homeschool, but then we're required to report to the state and everything else. Well, because, yeah, the fruit of your marriage is basically controlled by the state if you have a state marriage license. So you're typically going to have more problems if you have a state marriage license. That's why I recommend against it. There's no scripture for it. Um, question, can you tell me if there's a certain link to, to your videos on Rumble? The only ones I find are people preaching against you. Weird. Um, you can go to my website, kingjamesvideoministries.com, and I post them right there on the main page. Um, question, do you believe God has provided a cure to every illness in existence through some natural means? And if so, are the Oriental, Orientals the ones with the remedies? Uh, Chinese medicine, um, there's the Ayurvedic, whatever, the Indian. Um, that's a whole different thing. And I think it's good for the Chinese people. The Chinese medicine is good for Chinese people. The Ayurvedic is good for the Indian people. Um, there's different things for different people. Um, no one culture has all the answers, has all the cures. Um, I am not against using some herbal remedies from other countries and things or spices or whatever. But, um, you know, when you live in an area and you eat from your geographic location, um, you will find, like I'll just give you an example, raw honey. If you're eating raw honey, if I would get raw honey shipped in from California, I'm um, here in Maine, the raw honey is not going to do any good for me. I need to get it from my local area because the bees are pollinating the flowers in my local area. So I'm getting that into me to protect me from allergies when springtime comes around. And it does, by the way, I've had major problems with allergies and it really does help when you eat raw honey. Um, as far as God having a cure for every illness, um, I really think that uh, the, the ancient thought of, you know, let food be your medicine. I'm not saying I agree with everything else that those people say or whatever else or the guy that said that, but food as medicine is a very, sound thing to do as a bible believer um local foods are going to cure most of what you have strong immune system will keep your strength up and you aren't going to get sick barely at all and your headaches will go away and everything else um so uh i have to put this one up brother matthew the enemies are always watching because they have no lives. <laughs> yes. Hide all my enemies out there. You know, see, now you feel good about it because I actually, you know, responded to you. You're waiting for me to mention your names, you know, and so, you know, I know, I know. Or, or say the wrong thing. And, and, you know, Brian's back on YouTube now and he said he was never coming back and everything. Make your videos, do your live streams, okay? You provide good entertainment, if nothing else. You know, that's, that's a good thing. 
Um, I need to write or put this off too, Brother Charles here. It's a really good point. A great way to picture off grid is to live as the way people did one to 200 years ago. Yeah, exactly. You don't have to get into all this off grid, you know, super duper solar power, yurt living stuff. Just live the way people did 100 or 200 years ago. Uh, do you still recommend let this mind be in you ministries? Um, I think that's uh, Michael D'Angelo. I haven't heard from him in a long time. Um, don't really have any opinion on that right now. I don't know what's going on with him or whatever else. Um, <laughs> put this up. That's pretty good question. Why was the Jesuit staring at the liquor cabinet? He was discerning his spirits. <laughs> Very good. I like that one. Um, I should probably write that down. That was a good one. I like that. Um, Question. In Trinidad and Tobago, they passed a law that public servants won't be paid if they don't have the death shot. I'm afraid it's going to get worse. What should I do? Yeah. It, brethren, we just have to keep standing, you know, and just, Lord, please deliver me from this whole thing. I mean, it's crazy, you know. I mean, you know, I live here in Maine, ultra liberal New England, and all the states up here are 70, 70 percent plus of the people have taken the shot you know and they're inoculated and and you know oh then it should go away because we've reached herd immunity no it's not going away and you know there's places and i i think to myself you know what if they start saying they're going to you know cancel driver's licenses cancel bank accounts whatever and i just keep praying and saying lord you know i know your word says that you won't suffer to me to, me to be tempted above that i'm able to bear but will with the temptation make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it? That's the promise right there. Romans 8, 28, all things work together for good to them, for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Rely on the promises of scripture and just say, Lord, if it's just going to keep getting worse in my country, where I'm at, my state, wherever, get me out of here. Show me where I'm supposed to go. Um, really insane times I wish I had easier answers than that but I don't uh, okay um, question what is the best way to get go about getting cheap land and a cheap dwelling on a small income without taking out a mortgage uh, non-electric land is going to be the cheapest out there um, that's a good way to do it if there's land that's been recently logged that's another good way to do it. If there's land that has an old wreck of a house on it and whatever else where the house is actually a liability and not an asset. In other words, you have to pay to have the place torn down. That's one of the reasons we got this place here for so cheap because our garage is literally falling down. So, I mean, literally the realtor, he told me, he said, I think the, the garage is pulling down, literally pulling down the price of the house. <laughs> it's pulling away from the house. And I said, yeah, I think you're right. And, uh, and it did. So could you find a, a piece of land in an area, a remote area that would have an old place on it that really would look bad? Or could you find uh, some land that's been logged or non-electric type of stuff or whatever else? Or, you know, can you get a, you know, a, as far as a cheap dwelling is concerned, um, there's recycled housing type of stuff that you can do. In other words, old, uh, Reefer trailers, um, the conics boxes, uh, old ambulances, school buses. We've used a lot of these different things. I mean, you can pick up a school bus, a used school bus for, you know, $2,000, sometimes cheaper. I mean, I, I bought one for $2,500 the one time, drove it to our property, and we used it to, we used it as our kitchen for a while. But the problem with that was, of course, in the summertime, using a wood cook stove inside of a metal school bus is, I mean, if you're into saunas, it's, it works out, but uh, it's pretty hot. And then, of course, the windows being open, there's no screens, and the mosquitoes are just coming in all the time. That was pretty miserable. And in the winter here, it gets too cold to use it, even with a wood cook stove going full blast and all the windows up. 
it's just not keeping the insulation in. And me with my height, I'm just, you know, scraping the, the inside of the thing, you know, with my head the whole time I'm walking around. But there are options. There are options. You can do a lot of that type of stuff and research it. Um, question. In the Bible, speaking in tongues, speaking foreign language, yes. Absolutely it is. Okay. Do you believe real Christians in America should flee to their countries? Not yet. Not yet. Um, there's This country's not totally gone at this point in time. Um, war might destroy this country and tear this country to pieces. I don't know. But uh, is that a possibility for the future? Maybe. I don't know. Question. Do you believe God has provided a cure to every illness in existence? Yeah. Okay. I already answered that question. Some of you are not paying attention. Um, question. Why are so many people convinced that King James was a psycho who hid the books of the Bible because of the lies that a lot of the Jesuits had brought out? Um, ah, man, I cannot think of the guy's name. The guy that came out and said that King James was a sodomite. Um, I can't think of that guy's name, but he came out after King James was dead, and he was definitely connected with the Jesuits. So um, a lot of that stuff comes out. Question: What are your view? What are your views on adoption? Um, if you can do it without a whole lot of uh, headaches and paperwork, I've known people that have adopted children and it can get really expensive and really difficult and bogged down and everything. Um, but if there's some way that you can do it, absolutely. I think it's great. Question, what are your thoughts on the seven church ages? Um, instruction and righteousness, it's great first uh, couple up to chapter three of revelation um basically chapter two and chapter three talks about the seven churches and you have the seven different ages of the church you know and then right now we're in the layer to see in instruction and righteousness absolutely yeah good points but doctrinal eesh, there's some issues um it's not as cut and dry as a lot of the people want to make you think it is um again you know you get into some of the guys like gene kim or robert breaker and they'll come out and they'll just parrot what Ruckman taught on the seven church, you know, ages and things like that. And um, it goes from this church age to that church age. But they leave out the fact that Ruckman would also say, yeah, there's some things I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't line up perfectly, you know, with the different church ages. There's some overlapping type of things there. So you can't quite make it for the different times of the church there. So you have to be careful of that stuff. Um, question. Have you seen an interview Jordan Peterson did with Muhammad Hijab about Christianity and Islam and possible ways to set build bridges? No, I have not. Um, I can't really comment on that because I haven't seen it. Um, question, what do you mean by barbarian in your name? I am intrigued as to what the meaning is to you personally. Um, barbarians were the ancient people that took down the Roman Empire um, because I'm considered by them to be uncivilized. I'm not part of their church structure. I'm, uh, I live in the middle of nowhere. I'm able to do a lot of things with my hands in terms of hunting, fishing, building structures, the whole deal, you know, making my own heat. And whatever else, I like to wear animal hides like this one. Um, so I like big swords and axes and whatever else. So kind of line up with the, and my ancestry is barbaric in nature. So um, I'm not a generational Catholic. Hmm. 
Okay, I'm trying to get down through here. Uh, is this really Brian live or a replay? This is Brian live. Okay, I am fully alive. <laughs> um, question is the prayer for salvation of Romans 10 13 just like the one that Paul did in Acts 9 5 through 6? He just uh, called Jesus Lord there, but not for his name. No, it's not the same thing. Um, uh, calling upon the Lord to be saved and whatever else, it's not exactly what Paul did there. Um, question, what do you think of David W. Daniels? Um, has put out some good work, but I have some issues with some of the stuff. You know, they, they made a tract about Jesus Christ being black because they didn't want to offend the African-American people and whatever else, which is blasphemy. Um, don't put a tract out with Jesus having blonde hair and blue eyes. Don't put a tract out with Jesus being a black man. Jesus was Jewish. I am not Jewish. I have no oh, special Jewish ancestry or whatever else. No, I am, you know, Northern European, barbaric, if you will. What the ancient Romans would have called a barbarian. What the Bible calls barbarian. You know, that's my ancestry. Um, but Jesus was a Jew. Okay, my Savior is a Jewish savior question what is your main advice about home birth in general nutrition if i can say it you know if i give you three pieces of advice nutrition 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 there you go um the health of the mother is of utmost importance to have a healthy baby without any problems and to have an easy childbirth again i've known brethren that had a hot home birth and it just was boom barely any pain it was just Okay, they're getting themselves ready for this is going to take hours and just out comes the baby and the baby's fine and great and everything else. It goes really well if you have your nutrition very high. Um, Brother Ryan, is it a sin to hate your enemies? I work with a transgender and an atheist who mock Jesus Christ in the Bible and it makes me angry. And am, am I wrong to hate them? Thank you. Um, you can, you know, they, the modern Christian thing to say is, you know, hate the sin but love the sinner and all this stuff. That's nowhere in scripture. Um, there is a thing back in the book of Psalms where David is saying, I hate them with perfect hatred, you know, and, and everything. And you can look at them and you can say, you know what, your damnation is going to be just and I have no time for you. Okay. You don't want to hear the gospel. You want to make fun of Jesus in the Bible. You're going to hell and you deserve to go to hell. Um, but love has to be there in case they come to a point of repentance where they're broken and they're saying, oh man, I, I just lost a loved one and whatever else. And you can say, were they saved? You know, and you can be honest with them and say, you know, you're, you're on your way to hell for who you are and what you're doing, what you're part of. But I love you enough to tell you the truth of that. And I'd love to be able to see you get saved, but it's going to mean some big changes coming into your life. And I don't think you want that, you know. So that's how I answer that. Um, question, how did you or can any of us get the amount of KJV knowledge you have? Were you taught a bunch in the beginning or did it just grab you? Just reading the KJV doesn't stick as well. Um, you have to become obsessed. Obsessed with it. Um, where it's all you think about. And um, where there's... The true path of sanctification, brethren, is dying to the world. Dying to yourself. Where you have... Everything that you once thought was important is taken away from you. So all that you're left with is just the Lord and his word. And that's a process. It doesn't just happen right at salvation you because you couldn't handle it. I could not have handled everything that's happened to me over the years. I couldn't have handled it all just as a one-time event. Uh, Lord, please save me. And everything just happens just within the you know 24 hours. I could never have. I couldn't have handled it. It just has to happen in time. So that's how I would answer that one. Um, this live stream is getting very long. Uh, okay.
Okay. Um, well, I go to hell if I read the NIV. You go to hell for rejecting Jesus Christ. Okay. Um, you know, the NIV, what you have to understand is when the Lord has something true, Satan will always counterfeit it. And the NIV is, I used one for many years, um, from the time I was 10 up until the time I was 25 years old. I used an NIV. I thought it was, you know, I believed in my heart that it was God's perfect word. I had no reason to doubt it. But then I was actually shown, no, actually it takes verses out because it's based on corrupt manuscripts that come from the Vatican. There's an agenda behind the NIV. And I thought, oh, wow, then what is God's perfect word? King James Bible. And I went over and I started reading the King James Bible. I saw the difference. I thought, oh, okay, wow, this is it. And I put my faith in the Lord at that point in time, and he saved me. Um, uh, I don't say people are lost simply because they use a new version. You might not understand the you know, manuscript evidence issue. My issue comes in when somebody says, no, I, I don't understand the King James Bible. I hate the King James Bible. I don't want anything to do with it. I prefer my new versions. Ugh. Then the Holy Spirit's not leading you at that point in time. You're using Bibles that were put out by the enemies of Jesus Christ, the Catholic Church. So, um, okay, I'm trying to get to the end of the thing here, but this is a good question I need to answer. Are we made in God's image? I heard a Peter Ruckman. I heard Peter Ruckman uh, said that we aren't. He says that Adam's image changed after he sinned. Also, what does it mean that Seth has made was made after Adam's image? Um, in the sense of Adam was the son, the created son of God. Uh, you can read about that. I, I think it's in Luke. Sorry, my mind's <laughs> right now. Um, but he uh, was created son of God. So in the, in that sense, uh, we're not made in that exact were created directly from God like that. When Adam fell, now he has corruptible flesh. So I believe at the time that, uh, you know, Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 27, let's make man after our image, after our likeness and everything. Um, I think it's talking about in that exact context, that time period, the Lord would have not had a uh, body that would have been considered corruptible, like he took on when he became a man about it, a body that hast thou prepared for me when he comes to the earth. He took on the nature of sinful flesh, but there was no sin in him. But it was still corruptible in the sense of, you know, he felt the pain of being crucified on the cross. So that image that was there originally in Genesis chapter 1, no, we don't have that incorruptible image like Adam initially had. And when Adam actually has a son, then he has, he takes on the, you know, the body of sin and, and death and he has blood in his veins and everything like his father Adam now has. So in that sense, yes, but body, soul, spirit, we are created after the similitude of God. So the book of James talks about, you know, we're man that's made after the similitude of God. So um, the three parts to one body, yes, we are made that way, but that original incorruptible body that Adam would have had, no, we're not created that way. Okay. Uh, trying to get down here. I am so far behind. Um, question, are you going to make more explorations on the Viking Christian connection? I'd love to, but unfortunately, there's it's a very hard subject to study because there's not a whole lot of good information out there. Um, uh, you know, most of the historians and things that are there, Snorri Sturluson and, and whatever, you know, he was converted to being Catholic, so you can't really trust a whole lot from him. And a lot of the other, you know, um, a lot of the information on the Vikings and whatever is very convoluted and, and everything, unfortunately. Um, so, OK. 
Okay, Let's see one here. Question, I got stumped recently with some questions from a lost person. Um, how can you know what good is without evil? Um, how is it possible for perfect beings to sin? Lucifer and Adam and Eve. Well, um, they weren't perfect in the sense that they were robots. God gave free will. And you see that from the very beginning. And the uh, uh, lost person there, the atheist, they come up with these really intellectual questions and whatever else. But, you know, um, God has given them a free will. So for them to say, well, they had to have been perfect. So then how could they have understood and whatever? Uh, well, God gave them free will and he explained what not to do. So, and they did it of their own free will. All right. Okay. Man, there's a lot of comments. <laughs> Okay, keep trying to get caught up here in the, okay, all right, we're at almost three hours here, so uh, I'll end with this one here, where did it go? Ah, uh, boy, I just saw it now. Oh, right, there it is. Okay. This one I'll end with. Question, is it possible that I can contact you besides via a letter? Um, right now, no. Okay. Um, I literally have a big size tote, and it is, you know, for years I've been putting my letters, ministry letters into it, and now it is to the point I can just barely get the lid on the thing. Um, I can't even come close to picking it up. It's right over here behind me, um, back against the wall underneath that window that you see right there. Um, I'm, you know, answering people uh, is very difficult for me because, um, you know, that's another thing to pray about. Somebody asked earlier about the thing of, you know, if we build on our property, will we, will we, will we be going back on the grid again? Will we have electric put to it? Uh, that's another thing we're praying about because, you know, the inefficiency that we are experiencing right now because of the off-grid thing. Yeah, I thought the world was, I didn't, when we planned to do the off-grid thing, I was thinking the world's going this way and the world went another way. And so um, to be completely off-grid at this point in time and continue an internet ministry is next to impossible with all the stuff that's going on and all the responsibilities that we have so um the lord oftentimes gives blessings and then he you know it's like the crowns that he gives to the 24 elders he gives them crowns and then they take their crown off and they cast it back before the lord and say you know thou art worthy and that's what i've seen with the lord do with blessings a lot of times you know you you get this thing of the lord he'll say um here you go. This fulfills your dream. But will you sacrifice it when the time comes? And that's what we're praying about right now. It is my dream to be off grid, to live as simple as I can, to live as cheaply as we can, debt free, the whole deal. But if I have to go back to an on grid type of setup in the future to make the ministry more effective and efficient, then okay. That's what I'm going to do. Um, I don't like it, but my my life is not my own. That was the whole point of this live stream today. Um, I made the mistake of saying I am done with YouTube because I was ticked off. I didn't ask anybody's opinion, really, and whatever. So I'm here, and I'm saying, okay, if you people want me back on YouTube, the body of Christ wants me back. If there are lost people that are learning and, and heading towards salvation, then absolutely, I'll come back. Um, it's not my decision to make. It's it's the Lord's ultimately, but he'll speak to me through a multitude of counselors, a multitude of people out there saying, yes, brother, we want you back. So um, that's where we're going to leave it. Um, I'll be doing more live streams as time goes on. Um, just coming on here and getting on it's a lot easier for me to do this than it is to 
go through all the process of editing and you know, recording, editing, rendering, uploading. So um, <clears throat> just wanted to, you know, again, we could be out doing some fun thing right now or whatever else, New Year's Day. Um, but I decided, you know what, I need to spend that time with uh, with the body of Christ, with my viewers and faithful friends that have been around for years. So, um, you people and your good questions, I'll tell you what. Uh, question, what verse in the Bible is the best to use in defense against the vaccine? Uh, Mark 2.17, they that are whole have no need of the possession, but they that are sick. I came out to call the righteous but sinners to repent. Mark 2.17 is a good one. Um, if you're whole, you have no need of the physician. If you have a good, strong immune system, you don't need uh, inoculation. So um, that's going to be it, especially one of, you know, a supposed disease that's so wimpy and you can get it, you don't even know you had it. So, um, but fight on, brethren. Um, thank you to everybody out there for your prayers. Um, like I said, this time of my dad dying and everything else, and I just, it's been such an easy time for me in terms of my sorrow. Uh, it's just, I've felt so strong through this time, and I thank all of you out there for praying for me because I know it's your prayers. So thank you for that, um, and thank you for your input. I really appreciate that, and I'm, I'll do my best to continue to serve the body of Christ. Uh, but I need to go before I, you know, stumble all over myself even worse than I already have. <laughs> so, um, but uh, we will start uh, seeing what happens um, with what's going on with everything. And uh, so that will be it. And I will see you, I guess, in upcoming videos. Um, please do continue to pray for us. And uh, everybody out there, we have another year. Okay. Um, we have another year to serve the Lord. So be thankful for that. Okay. And let's think about what can we do for the Lord this, this coming year. So, um, that is going to be it. And we will see you in future videos.